Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Spar and Brawl. I hope you're having a decent day. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Sam, and we're back with episode three of the Four Corners of Geopolitics. Been really enjoying uh, making this series, and our first two videos did a little bit better than we expected. So really happy with that. We have too many stories. We really cover all four corners of geopolitics this time, so I'm not going to list them. But here are just some quick ones, and you can find timestamps down below. I'll try to be a little bit more specific uh, with what each story is about so you can just jump from one story to another and please like and subscribe of course but here are just a few of them we're going to talk about this america summit sam has some inputs on it and other issues conflicts related to it katie halper had two guests and i picked up on quite a few interesting things that they said that i would like to share ongoing relationship between india china and russia a bit too much here for me to elaborate quickly afghanistan you can imagine where the story is going to go and then there's also some more tension in the Middle East between Iran, Israel, and Turkey that we're going to discuss. But there's plenty more here. I just gave a very quick overview. So make sure to check out timestamps in the description box and the comments as well. But all right, Sam, if all is good with you, how would you get us started with the first story? Sure. We have a good uh, couple of articles, I would say, about Biden, uh, Saudi thing, and uh, mm -hmm. Afghanistan. So, you know, worth sticking around, probably. But yeah, let's, uh, shall we start with the summit of Americas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shall we? <laughs> so the expectations, shall we say, for summit of America were low. Uh, already there were people in mainstream writing article that this is going to be like, are, is, are, is Biden even going to be allowed to speak? Is that like <laughs> wise? Is that? So the major controversy first came about when Biden refused to invite the Venezuelan, Cuban, and what's the other country? I forget. Uh, yes. I want to say Bolivian, but it wasn't. I think it was Nicaragua. Honduras? It wasn't Nicaragua. I think a bunch of them didn't come either, but yeah, the yeah, three that they did the in the one. Yeah, Cuba, Venezuela, and somewhere else he didn't invite because he is. We'll get to yeah, yeah. Uh, but he because he has a he has a principled position mm -hmm. against uh, dictators, right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> right, you know yeah, the yeah. keys. You, no, no. The thing is, you only yeah, like, visit on, man. dictators. I don't want to. But them coming to your house is different, you know. It's like going to That's someone's a good house. Point. That's <laughs> such a good point. <laughs> Fucking, hell. he should have gone with that. That but is I often genuinely, come up with I good things that. for their press I genuinely team. get that though. I'm like, you know, you know, I no, that yeah, doesn't make any is, sense. <laughs> it does though, it does. Like, you know, they invite you, there is free food involved. <laughs> there is, you know, you go to stay in a hotel, you can steal the shampoos. You know, there is quite a lot of, but <laughs> if you invite them to your house, yeah. that is, no, you should have gone with that instead of a pretty simple position on <laughs> principle i don't even know how they say those things like how how that words come out of their mouth like their body should no, fight they back. come out of biden's mouth <laughs> i know but like <laughs> <laughs> the spokesperson whoever said it yeah it's like but so but then again uh, but uh, then a couple of other so when he did that then most importantly but i also think to other presidents although i think one of them said <laughs> I'm sick. I can't come. <laughs> <laughs> but the Mexico president was quite uh, open about the fact that he doesn't appreciate. Yeah. So he sent a lower level sort of, I don't know, like he sent his cousin or something. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> Just, you go. <laughs> you know, I'm not good. You know, so they kind of, um, what do you say? Uh, how do you say, what was it? They shied away from the mm. event or whatever. And then the event happened. The event happened. Uh, pre oh, another important thing was that Guaido, even though apparently Biden was supposed to like have talks with him or they I'll talk about it later. Yeah, he wasn't allowed. To, he wasn't invited either. Neither was Maduro nor Guaido. That's actually, in my I, view, that is such a good, like sort of, a, not an analogy, but that's microgasm of what's going on with the Biden administration. <laughs> and like, you can see it with AOC and stuff as well. Like this idea that, you know, not, we don't want to be too Maduro. Oh, no, 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 guys. Yeah. Like, they, they are just, you know, they are these insecure little shits that mm -hmm. just respond to cri uh, criticisms by just, uh, uh, we're not going to do anything. So it, it's so funny that neither Guaido nor Maduro were invited, I think. 
But I, yeah, I mean, I think with the Guido one, they're like, yeah, this is not working. <laughs> even for <laughs> even for them, yeah. so now they're stuck. Since we are on Guido, did you see the video on Jimmy Dore and uh, other stuff? Yeah, I didn't look into it too much to see exactly what it was, exactly who was there or why he went there. Or like, was it just a random restaurant or what? It did you look into it a bit more? Yeah, but, but the thing is, he was attacked. And <laughs> apparently, as soon as he leaves the house, people just, oh, fucking, oh, you know, tomatoes and eggs flying. It's become a cartoon. But uh, at the same time, In, I mean, it's famous that Chavistas were, I mean, I had lots of friends from Venezuela who would say Chavistas are almost like operate as semi-gang operations. So it could have been uh, orchestrated. But yeah, apparently as soon as he leaves this out, which is, but again, when you get into politics, when you try to do a coup yeah. and you fail, you have it coming, motherfucker. It, it, yeah, it a half so ass coup and, you know, you're in no position to do a coup. You, know, I, you don't have... If I'm not, anything what it you don't have what it takes to, <laughs> to do a if I'm not mistaken he was part of a right-wing militia when he was younger or something so he's not exactly a paragon of like you know democracy i suppose yeah yeah no that's for sure but i mean you know i think if you're going to do the coup you want to make sure you have the army right like i mean without army or military i don't know how you do a coup but Maybe there's well, no he had six. <laughs> he had six uh, operators from Florida. So, oh, fuck One you. of them brought their dog too. <laughs> pitbull. He has a pitbull, <laughs> and it's not trained well. I tell you. <laughs> Kept outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the owner. It's about the owner. <laughs> but um, yeah, so but but apparently it did. Be- it went better than. You know, it Biden didn't do a whole Jimmy Kimmel sort of a start talking about biracial couples in the you know back in the days. How many ad adverts with soaps you had that there was a Mexican dude was washing his you know, he didn't do any of that. But so you know, political political came out with a very positive headline: Biden ducks summit debacle, Los Angeles. So that's you know, when when like the positive headlines is that. Nothing. He didn't piss his pants. There was no, you know, racist comments. <laughs> None of that. But um, so I'm just opening a link. Yeah. Atlantic had a relatively interesting article. Just the big. I'm gonna read. Yes, this I actually article. read um, a Did bit of this Atlantic that? article. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't too bad because I mean, you know, even they had agreed already within within like you know that part of the media that this is going to be a shitty event so the person no, laid like it out pretty well in advance i think I the mean, article I, was I, written I, before right i think sorry the summit right if i recall i uh 13th of june so oh, yeah, three I days ago okay maybe, or maybe june. yeah maybe, june. maybe just the first day maybe yeah. after the first day or something but i liked uh, i like this stylistically and i like the i genuinely like picture this article painted in the beginning it was really yeah. fun and good so the article from the atlantic what's behind american decline uh colon domestic dysfunction the summit of the americas hosted this year by joe biden offers a measure of how far the u.s has fallen by william newman so this is how it is you know usually these type of articles maybe not the atlantic but the guardian shit they always start with a personal like an yeah. algae and stuff i feel this one started with it is so it's a version <laughs> of that that actually works that actually works as the golden lights bled from the los angeles sky one evening last week a mariachi band played at a rooftop cocktail party for corporate executives and government officials from a couple of dozen countries they had gathered on the eve of the summit of americas and every few years meeting that would begin in the city the following day. With a flare of trumpets, the band launched into El Rey, the Mexican ranchero classic of wounded machismo. I don't have a throne or a queen, the lead mariachi sang, or anyone who understands me, but I'm still the king. Or anyone who understands me. The song could have been the theme for President Joe Biden's (laughs) speech. (laughs) Come on, man. Nobody understand me, but I still yeah. have Jill. I'm still the king. <laughs> no. 
So, yes, you see what I mean about painting a picture? No, no, no. This article is honestly not too bad. And then historically, it kind of gets back to the first America Summit. Huh? At least that no, one yeah, invited that everyone. Song, <laughs> I, I'm just the beginning. Is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least that one invited everyone. <laughs> I mean, that part is ridiculous. It's insane. <laughs> and did you also did you also listen to the Katie Halper one? Let, um... No, go ahead, continue. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to read a yeah, bit yeah. more of this. If a group of unusually per, per, Persian political scientists had wanted to design a mechanism to, me, to measure the decline of the U.S. influence <laughs> and its stature, it might have created the Summit of the Americas. First hosted by Bill Clinton in Miami in 1994, the, that inaugural meeting marked the moment of U.S. ascendancy. As America stood at top, a unipolar world after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Latin America was also going through a transformation, no longer a region of military dictatorships. N nearly every country had a democratically elected government and many were eager to work with Washington. But last week in Los Angeles, the first time the gathering had been held in the US since the original event in Miami, the summit came across as a showcase of US dysfunction and lord ambition. The planning was chaotic, and even the guest list became a needless source of controversy. Andres Manuel cool. Lopez Obrador, the Mexican leader, popularly known as AMLO, really refused yeah, to so attend funny. because the yeah refused to attend because the White House did not invite the dictator president of Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. So it was Nicaragua. Yeah, dictator president. I, I love how they. I know, got stuck on that, that too, but I think like this is like the compromise the writer reached. Yeah, yeah, that's... with the editor. They're like, okay, president, so you can't just say president. Okay, can't just say dictator. How about dictator president? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mom slash, uh, you know, <laughs> sister. <laughs> what at time there was? Oh, or sorry. A, a violation in his eyes of the principle of hemi hemispheric solidarity. So I think yeah. it's not so much uh, coming back to the going back to Biden and why he didn't invite these three. It wasn't so much about the fact that he's going to Saudi and they're coming to his <laughs> house. It was more about the fact that they're your neighbors. So, you know, if like, if somebody is an asshole, like in another city, like kill yeah. somebody or something, that's none of your business. <laughs> but if it's your neighbor, that's really bad. I guess that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I mean, another what caught my attention also just right now, I hadn't seen it. It's like um, the person wrote the planning was chaotic and even the guest list became a needless source of controversy. OK, that's not a guest list. <laughs> like if you're inviting <laughs> five people to a meeting, that's not a guest list. <laughs> Well, <laughs> like the me is, inviting I mean, you to this show is not a guest list. I mean, no, I mean, it's a, <laughs> this is like a sort of a big, whatever. It's like a version of a big meeting, right? Like these summits and stuff. So, I mean, <coughs> inviting the people, I, I, you know, it's like, I mean, that's I not a guest really, list. It's a bit different. I, but I, one of the things that fascinated me after learning about like professional politics is how much of it is based on like parties like none of the, i thought this sort of attending summits and that type of thing would be a job of a, you know pre, or like trying yeah. to get the mexican president over would be part of the job or whatever but no it's really like biden doesn't like him so <laughs> but the mexican president the thing. mexican guy is tired so he's not coming <laughs> but yeah, i mean I you know, know we don't follow mexican um news that close to even at an international level but this new guy seems to have a little bit of weight that he can throw around just like the way that oh yeah this article talks about him and He's... others as well it's like yeah it's like I the like biggest guest didn't come pretty much i mean if you're gonna go by by guest yeah. list isn't canada part of summit <laughs> of america <laughs> they, were there. They, were, they didn't have an invite <laughs> they, still, like, came in. <laughs> they just showed up <laughs> like, oh, by the way trudeau is also here I put yeah, a couple of chairs in up. the back <laughs> <laughs> there's a moose we brought as a, as a gift to your king <laughs> but no, I Lopez guy is quite. He was pretty anti lockdown. He's quite left wing, but also he had better relationship with Trump than Biden. Uh, 
because he's kind of every, I mean uh, they say it's so funny because every time it's surprisingly uh, president of Mexico had better relations with Trump than Biden surprisingly Emran Khan prime minister of Pakistan had better relations with Trump than Biden surprisingly <laughs> MBS had better relations with Trump than like every, it's not surprising if everybody had better relations <laughs> with Trump than Biden you know except Trudeau yeah. you know like it, it's just it's so except weird except Trudeau and like probably you know Hollande or something <laughs> Uh, Hollande? Oh, Macron. sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Macron, wow. You, uh, <laughs> I'm losing <years>. it. <laughs> or Macron, yeah. Yeah, Macron, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm not even <laughs> sure. Because the thing with, man, you prefer, I mean, this has been my experience. You prefer an asshole than somebody who's just not there. In, in my experience, like it's with Biden, yeah. I guess that a lot of thing comes from how K because there doesn't seem to be like with George Bush, it was clear that George Bush isn't in charge, but it was clear who is in charge, Dick Cheney. Yeah. But with him, who's the fuck, is Jill Biden running? Because who's running? Lincoln is certainly not in yeah. charge. Kamala Harris isn't. Pete Buttigieg is, who's in charge? Who's yeah, Biden? no, exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean, the, the, you, you, it really looks like that from the outside. Like, I mean, in the beginning, maybe there was like a little bit of a plan for the administration and stuff, but now it's like they've completely lost it and checked out. And I think the fact that it doesn't seem more chaotic is just because, you know, the Democratic Convention and uh, the DNC and all the donors and stuff, they put forward like the most like, you know, typical kind of person that they would want as a president right they just went with like the least like you know problematic kind of person and also agenda and everyone so they're not even trying to do anything too crazy so i think without that's why it's holding on at the very least it's because they're not too ambitious they're not trying to do anything and it's just they're just doing a little bit of business as usual how they think democrats should be a buy should be you know doing that's how that's the only reason i think it's functioning do you get what i mean because they're just such like but they're just so not doing anything special function. yeah and i mean not even functioning but at least to this extent a little bit of function yeah like yeah, the wheels I, haven't I, completely fall enough but yeah you're right maybe they even have and i think the only thing that's holding them together is just that you know they're doing the typical kind of very democrat stuff so there's probably already a system in place yeah. across everywhere that just helps I mean, it move forward yeah i've never i i don't think a presidency has ever felt like uh you know being put down by morphine <laughs> like basic that's how it feels like you're on a in a car that is like everything surrounding like there's air twig yeah. everything is falling around you and there's an old man telling you calm down <laughs> Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's but honestly, okay. I think like once <laughs> once that domestic agenda was over, like the they could have just attention. yeah, they could have just held elections and like yeah. and like got the next president because like I think that's Not, as far as they went. Like you know, they were like, we're gonna guys, do we, this. <laughs> yeah, guys, we haven't planned very much for <laughs> yeah. uh, Anybody? Uh, any suggestion? <laughs> what should we do now? <laughs> we, we still yeah. have. Two years, god damn. <laughs> oh my god. Really? Oh, no, it's been longer. No way. What, what year is it? No, <laughs> if you round it up, and if you know, the last six months, nobody wants you to do anything yeah. anyways. That's <laughs> we just have no, a year to go, that. Joe. I mean, yeah, it's so weird. And then, yeah, I don't know if you had anything else. I just wanted to touch on one or two things from the no, Katie yeah, Halper yeah, go ahead. interview. Yeah, no. So Katie Halper had two people there and they spoke about the summit and they spoke a lot about Haiti as well. Yeah, so that a was, few interesting yeah. things that I picked up. One is like the simplest one about like, you know, why identity politics is not the solution to everything is that one of the guests, the female one pointed out. I mean, she was to her, yeah, she was like, you know, it's such a shame. So however you want to put it, but she's like, you can see like like black people are the face of the U.S. empire now. So a lot of them, right, including female black people, because I believe the lady who came out about the America summit and she's the one who answered about the whole principle no, and new, everything. Don't you know Karim Abdul-Jabbar has been uh, <laughs> set as the new White House since Jen Psaki has gone. Karim Abdul-Jabbar. Karim Abdul-Jabbar, by the way, doing 
um, she, much better as a what was he basketball player or yeah I think karate so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <basketball. laughs> yeah. didn't he play in a movie with Bruce Lee I think but yeah, yeah he did in the dragon she's not, movie yeah she's not as good with the press secretary job as you know a sports but yeah no but uh, yeah, yeah that was like a her. good point you know you just like a good example she had there to point out that you know just putting in it that you that someone else can turn just putting like She's you know black Haitian female origins. will not solve the bro <laughs> will not solve any problems really and then yeah and when they talked about haiti and stuff i mean you know they the pretty history much of haiti yeah the history fantastic. of haiti was fascinating and right now i mean they made it seem like you know there is no government pretty much in Haiti right now. I mean, still just being run by the U.S. And then the last thing was this pretty funny academic thing. Apparently, like, so the New York Times did this, like, pretty good, what they were saying, like, expose in Haiti. That. Yeah, and then there were, like, but a bunch of professors <laughs> were pissed off because their work went referenced properly and stuff. And these guys were like, come on, now there's this. There's so much more you can put with the data that they put out and all that. Well, but no, no, academics but are so concerned with their reference, with the way they reference and everything. That's their that's their life. Yeah, that's how they get... That's their bread and butter. Yeah, that's how they move forward. That's so, how I mean, they justify their <laughs> bullshit, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I, I do think they take bibliography too far, even at the yeah, at like really. the bachelor level, honestly, if you ask me. They just take it way too far sometimes it's the only way you can really objectively measure if somebody is steady i guess in a you know yeah. unless you really want to read every fucking <laughs> essay of a fucking undergrad yeah but i would uh, my excuse me, i would uh, say um uh, then you, you did you get what was their problem was it their work was not cited yeah in appropriate places was it misquoted what was the reason? not not cited apparently i think because i didn't oh, look not it, cited not cited right, properly no, not that quotes were taken and stuff but you know apparently yeah. they had done this work somewhere else or something and they weren't referenced properly i mean a this wasn't an academic work by them so they didn't have to yeah, follow the same yeah. guidelines so they put the referencing and all that and they were saying like look um instead of being mad at the new york times you know, the New York Times has now made available a bunch of data and archives that people can go um, study from. That was their own take. It just reminded me that, you know, I feel like it's taken too far, but at the same time, I understand that it's everything, your number of citations, and just think about it. You're like, damn, if New York Times had cited me, maybe this would have sealed that tenure job, but <laughs> it didn't. I don't know. I'm just thinking for that. Yes, but uh, yeah, it is a bit petty, though, but sure. So uh, just a quick update on the actual like, conflict before we do our media analysis mm. <laughs> of some kind. So uh, first of all, there seems to be that, yeah, uh, the, at least the, the war is going in the Russia's favor, it seems, and it's sinking in into the even Western media at this point. Yep. It seems they're going to take over the, the large parts of the Luhansk region and uh, t- take that uh, there is a city that everybody's fighting over now. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, I'm just checking. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, Severodonsk will decide Ukraine's future. That's an article by Vladislav Davidson, uh, is a Russian American writer, the chief editor of the Odessa Review, and a run resident fellow at the Atlantic Council. Oh, apologies. Um, so more than 100 days on, the fate of Russia's campaign to capture the entirety of the Luhansk region is still hangs in balance. If the whole Luhansk region falls, the rest of Ukraine's east may very likely follow. Both the Russian and Ukrainian forces have committed their forces here for a strategic reason, re- reasons. The territory is critical for a continued Russian advance in the direction of cities such as Dinor, Dinopro, uh, President Zelensky understands this, which is why he made an unannounced visit to Lishyachansk at the weekend. Apologies for pronunciations. The last, uh, so um, this is like the last uncontested town in the region is still controlled mm-hmm. by Zelensky's forces. This is from unheard. And the guy has a, you know, he's a resident fellow at Atlantic Council. So he's not exactly a... Yeah you know, uh, like a radical, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, uh, so it, it seems to be 
sinking in. I don't know if you noticed in no, the, no, 100%. Uh, it's been at least like two weeks. You know, you know, that New York Times newsletter that I that I get every day in my phone, oh. and even even in the for them, the narrative, you know, there's exactly the one. I mean, you just said, I mean, now they're pretty much saying that the fighting is, yeah, narrowed down to this um, one city in the east. Mm-hmm. And most of the East is, yeah, falling into Russia's hand and control, it seems, right? Yes, yes, that's... And apparently, yeah, basically, like, if they take this city, uh, and apparently right now they've taken most of it, and now there's, again, like, a factory. I don't know what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. Why the bars all, like, there is one factory yeah. left, guys. We take this back. Like, <laughs> no, it's a chemical plant, apparently, now or something. They're, like, plant. all, like, like, under a chemical plant. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> What is going like every other war is like the presidential palace or the main <laughs> municipality or the mayor of office? Like in this war, it's like, yeah, we take over the you know, the bicycle factory, guys. The bicycle, <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> so, but anyway, I mean, I don't know much about war, yeah. so probably Man, there is and- a reason for it. But, but I like to point out before getting to my last bit, I like to point out the best probably publication in the world, the most. Uh, you know, the most uh, prestigious, the most trustworthy, I would say. I don't know if you agree with me. <laughs> the one that is the light in the darkness that, you know, uh, <laughs> democracy is dying in. Uh, Washington Post, they are oh, still my. fucking holding out. Oh, yeah. They are holding out. <laughs> Listen, that's, I'm not going to read the article to be honest because bullshit, but uh, that's the title. Just listen to the title. In Ukraine, by David Ignatus, by the way, who I'm not sure who he is. David Ignatus in Ukraine is the balance tipping in Moscow's favor? Mm. Not yet, not yet. Washington Post is still publishing, you know, <laughs> uh, continues to publish self-help material for the Man. liberal uh, panic, you know, people who are panicked out there. Honestly, like, um, sorry, I mean, gotcha. Continue reading, and then no, no. Oh, but, uh, like honestly, like Washington Post, like. I mean, before, you know, I was in the kind that, you know, I look for articles. I mean, I said New York Times and Washington Post, they have, they write, produce so many articles that some of them are good. You know, you give them a read. But after this last like thing that's happened, then I can't even look at Washington Post like directly in the eyes. I'm like, <laughs> no, this is like, like lost like all faith. Like, <laughs> which, which bit, which one? The uh, Felicia Sonmez, yeah, Taylor just the Lawrence, whole thing, yeah. Amber Heard, no, Taylor Lawrence yeah. really like doubling down and stuff. Like, literally, like Taylor Lawrence has put me off from even you know, reading like a you know, they might have a good article or something. I mean, I just can't even look at them in the eyes anymore. I mean, just such me shit show. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, you, you expect a little bit more integrity or something. I just... you, you see, like you go to a doctor's office, there's a Washington Post on the thing. You just put another magazine on top. Like, you know, oh, I can't, I can't no. look at you. Oh, I mean, you know, do, do big companies bidding and all that. That is fine. What it comes down to just <laughs> defending this lady over nothing and like she's like, you know, stabbing them back. I just don't even get it. Just lost all respect you know yeah i know uh, yeah at, yeah at least defend bezos <laughs> have some self-respect you know <laughs> but um sorry and now i don't know if you've noticed there is a it's a starting jimmy dora i think covered this some other people may have that it's a starting to playing game is a starting mm-hmm. biden so yeah zelinsky <laughs> you know i remember man i remember back in the days it was 1982 and i told zelinsky Zelensky, you know, the Soviets are coming for you. And then he told me, I'm not Zelensky. And <laughs> so I don't know what, but he's recalling that, yes, Ukraine didn't take their warning. As if, if yeah. Ukraine took their warning seriously, they had a chance. Yeah, like, like, you know, like, it's like telling Iran right now, you know, America is coming for you. Like, what can, <laughs> like, unless we have a 30, 40 year, like, <laughs> window. What can we like? Okay, fuck yeah. it. Right? We're done here. Now. You know, like it's just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So the blame game is starting. That seems like fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I wanted I to know. also share a little piece of news. This made sure, me laugh. Sure, sure. Russia's oil production increased by five percent in May. <laughs> so, yeah. so I mean, this has to do with also the drop that it had last year. The, sorry, the previous month. But look at this. In annual terms. Russia's May 2022 output dropped just 2.5% from last year, their oil output. So compare this May 
with all the sanctions, where they're going to sell it and all of that just well, dropped I by have... 2.5. So they've just found more and more clients <laughs> well, to I, the, the East is, and though, in China and everything. I mean, thing, it's just... We, we, yeah, we're going to talk about that. It's probably yeah, exactly that. But I would add that it doesn't... Uh, the thing is... The, I, my, my dad used to do business internationally. And there is a thing. When you do business with America, though, first oh, of, of all, va- value. And second of all, they pay in cash, man. There is a difference. Like, I mean, but the fuckery. I don't think like, the I Russians were Chinese... doing business with the Americans, though. I mean, were they no, still? That's the thing. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. No, but Europeans think Germans. Mm. Germans would pay much. Be- like, I would imagine the Chinese are, first of all, naturally. I, if I were Chinese, I would buy at a much lower price. Mm-hmm. Second of all, I no, would imagine enough. they are, they are uh, not as quite, you know, quick with the cash. Just like the Russians, right? Russians are off. Like, yeah, you yeah. do business in Russians, you have to pay off, like, six different gangsters just for the like the shipment get to the right mm. place and doesn't end up in a different like country yeah so, yeah i that's I, you have to like no no of course i mean you know it doing yeah yeah you're right perhaps you know you can sell for more to the europeans that make complete sense but i mean it's just interesting you know like so far this year russia's crude output totaled 220 million tons in january to may a 3.5 percent increase over the same period last year so in the first quarter they they at least um, the output was more now you're right perhaps they sold it at a lower price and all this but you know and by the way it does put a bit of a dent into the whole russian gas hike theory i mean i guess their their argument is that we are not buying it so yeah but they, they they didn't like it's not like with oil when they are always like like telling russia to increase the supply but it's uh, anyway sorry yeah no i no, don't so- know so just with the energy it was just interesting you know with all these boycotts and stuff all this going on and of course they for oil they've given some european countries special exemptions and let's see when the winter comes you know i don't know how much they promised to cut back on gas but even i think germany and stuff they haven't i think tied their hands fully saying we're not buying any gas from russia if i'm not mistaken Right. No, I think they still have some. Yeah, there is a uh, Germans and Italians and some other countries. Yeah. I think they got some sort of like uh, exemption, sort of like Iraq gets with Iran. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like uh, you, uh, we, it's so bad. with Iraq, I uh, really feel bad as well because they are constantly berating Iraq for <laughs> buying energy from Iran and then not like every other country sells it at like three times the price of Iran. Yeah. So Iraq is like, what you, what, what you, oh, I feel so bad for Iraq. No, exactly. But yeah, Germany and Italy are like that. I mean, it, I must say the best thing that did happen with Ukraine war, though, the silver lining for me was just how, like, you can feel it in the, even in the, like, articles and stuff. Like, the, I do generally feel nobody even, like, takes Europe. Europe is done as a serious, like nobody is taking them seriously anymore. Britain, maybe a bit, but even not, sadly, yeah. not that. But Europe is just literally now been reduced to like, you know, like Iraq level yeah. in terms of political influence. Exactly, like, political influence, because they still have money and they can put all their yeah. money together and throw it around and be a big market and all that. Yes. But, but exactly, but when it comes to something that if the US opposes, then yeah, Europe it's might over. as like well have been a small country. Like it doesn't ma- matter when it comes to that. Well, we're going to talk about this in a bit, but BBC Persia, for example, that talks about Iran issues, they are always like taking the European side, especially during Trump years that, mm-hmm. you know, oh, Trump is bad, but Iran shouldn't be bad too. Mm-hmm. You, you don't answer negativity with mm-hmm. two mm-hmm. wrongs, don't make a right type of thing. <laughs> always, and now, even when now you have Europeans doing the same sort of thing that, you know, we, we, we suggest America and Iran both come back to the, <laughs> we are, we are both being bad boys. And then even BBC Persia is like, yeah, Europe said that and nobody cared. Yeah, yeah. let's move on. <laughs> let's talk about real. Like nobody cares anymore. Yeah. Like, fuck off. Like, I, I'm so happy about that because I hate it. Like those people I hate more than, you know, I prefer being an asshole, but this yeah. Yeah, you know, no, I, I feel you there. Except yeah. Macron, he looks like he wants single handedly. He goes around and makes trips he and all that. So that's <laughs> the thing. So keeps He's like, come on, let me go talk to Erdogan. I'll settle <laughs> it. They're like, no, 
Give me one drag. <laughs> Please. Come on, let me talk with you. Putin. Want to I'll, I'll, uh, do, can I can I negotiate anything with Putin? No? Or uh what? Okay. But I still come on, let me go. <laughs> let me go anyway. <laughs> really likes traveling. I swear to God, he's probably like me. He's one of those people who like his skills. hotel shampoos and that type of thing he loves just like can i take this towel with me no oh <laughs> he's one of those people that because of them the uh, hair dryer is you know is uh, uh, nailed to the wall now yeah it's attached <laughs> like we take it <laughs> but yeah with macro yeah. he's still trying to live the dream but <laughs> <laughs> trying to feel it Uh, Merkel's room. By the way, Merkel just came out did an interview saying uh, she has no regrets in the way she handled Russia. I like how she, because she's not like Schultz yeah. in a position now. Exactly. Just say what, yeah, f- no, fuck you. I did great. No. I mean, talk <laughs> about like exiting politics at the perfect at right. time. Jesus oh, man. Yeah. Christ. I oh, almost man. think she knew or something. She was, yeah, guys, I'm out of here. Bef- whatever. I mean, yeah, I she know. didn't seem like a joke. So if there's anybody who who you know had the best analysis of the information that she was being fed you know at a high level you know not that she did yeah. it for that but i mean i, I doubt to be honest, well did anybody could i i doubt putin knew then even <laughs> but whatever yeah no no you're right but i'm like you know if there was somebody who did put a little bit to get yeah, far, but i like, don't think but i don't think exactly no she's that. her country i mean i would imagine like german uh, spy operations and would be focused on russia naturally so yeah but she left at the right yeah. like schultz so i mean <laughs> it's so funny that as soon as you think left just made some progress it turned the the, the wind turns into the mo- biggest like so sh- they're gonna get fucked and yeah. then in the next election it, it's all like they're gonna be out for another 20 years again <laughs> like it's just like oh anyways <laughs> All right, Sam, let's pivot to the Middle East. And I believe we're going to start again with Joe Biden's trip to, to Saudi and Israel. This is like one of those funny trips because it happened yet. But it's like we're all accompanying Joe Biden, helping him <laughs> make his way there. Making you know, plan. <laughs> you often talk about after the visit. But here it seems like all the interesting stuff coming before. After it's probably going to be like, yeah, Biden got there. They didn't. <laughs> they spoke. Nothing happened. <laughs> He left. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, uh, I mean, I would imagine, considering how much it's reporting, says that uh, the Arab countries are upset about him, uh, sort of, I guess, being dismissive towards them. It could lead to something, but at the same time, I genuinely like people talk about these things. Like this is part of justifying, you know, so I guess, their job and stuff. Journalists and. Uh, other people to be honest commentators like us maybe presidents don't really i mean especially mm. with biden you can yeah. tell presidents are not don't matter and with trump even though there is so much made of his close relation with mbs even the left talks about his close relationship with mbs a lot the reality is during his time you already like the 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 Uh, the hint, the point where the relationship truly changed was the Aramco attacks. Mm-hmm. Aramco was attacked. Trump did do nothing. He didn't do shit. And at that, since then, Saudis have realized that uh, this is not like 1990s yes, where yeah. you know they would invade for Kuwait or something. The world has changed now. No, that's so, a good point. Uh, yeah, it's a, and America is retreating from the region partially because America. itself now uh, there is a big movement towards uh, exploration of gas and mm-hmm. oil in america so the relationship is you know is changing it's nothing to do with you know this president or that president no i agree with you and i mean with joe biden i mean you know i wouldn't get into a story but I, i was thinking the other day like if you made a list of the top 10 20 most influential public figures not public Like public as in like working for the government in the U.S. I don't know if Biden would crack that top 10. So forget about the billionaires and all that. If you just look at people who work for government, like would he make the top 10 most influential people that he's right not now? There, he's not even in top 100. Guys. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. a, you know, he's not there That's right true. now. Uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah. he, he like recently he's just been nothing, you know, I mean, you know. Yeah, and, and I, I would 
add, it's not just about him again. Position of president doesn't have that yeah. much power. It's but like him it's in pretty much a ceremonial you know, power. Because well, he can't even yeah. do the ceremonial stuff. You know, like Obama at least was out there in your face. Now, whether it meant yeah. anything or not, that's a different question. Yeah, yeah he can't even mm. do the ceremony. <laughs> Can't go on Jimmy Kimmel and have a <laughs> fucking conversation. Yeah, so uh, but so it's ap- apparently now confirmed because there mm. was a couple of times that they were reporting, but they said we don't know, no, it's not that, no, no, principal position on democracy, <laughs> principal position on democracy. But now it's confirmed. The Guardian came out with a really, really uh, harsh article, like right? <laughs> betrayal, colon. Critics condemn Biden's plan to visit mm. Saudi Arabia. Trip comes after Biden labeled the kingdom a pariah as questions uh, also emerge over president's trip to Israel. Joe Biden will visit Israel, the occupied West Bank, and Saudi Arabia next month. So he's just, he's doing a band-aid mm-hmm. sort of takeoff situation. Like, oh, fuck it, let's get it over. <laughs> occupied territory is illegal. So, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the White House said on Tuesday the announcement immediately put the administration on a defensive, given the president's previous stance that Saudi Arabia's regime was a pariah mm. because of because of, of the course. murder of Jamal Khashoggi and other human rights abuses. Stop it! Did other. they write it that way? Hold on, let me look at the article. Wow! Other human rights abuses. Other. <laughs> Jamal, Khash- and I'm, I, I want to do a I, here. I don't know if it's the right place. But I want to say that about the left as well. Abby Martin did a great. Uh, Abby Martin went at uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I saw the that. summit of America. Yeah, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But anyway, she confronted Anthony Blinken, and again, she also said uh, they are resp- Saudis are responsible for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, Israelis for the murder of Shirin. Uh, I forget her family mm-hmm. name. The Palestinian American or Lebanese American. Uh, reporter and the yeah. Yemeni civil war. I'm sorry, these are not these three situations yeah. are not equivalent. Stop bringing murder of Jamal Khashoggi up with the reporter who was in an actual war zone. He wa- she wasn't somebody who was working for Washington Post writing commentaries. And as we are told by all Washington Post, mm-hmm. Post journalists, it's a congeal place mm-hmm. to work. <laughs> it's a very congeal place to work. Mm-hmm. So no, Jamal Khashoggi's murder is not equivalent to a murder of a reporter working in a war zone being pretty much murdered on purpose by a sniper. Uh, I mean, Jamal Khashoggi was murdered on purpose mm-hmm. too, but different circumstances. And uh, neither of these situations, frankly, are comparable to what's going on in Yemen. It's or, like, yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, it's, or everything else that the Saudi regime um, had done. Yes, you know, like, yes, it, it, everything, yeah. Everything else, this one, this, I'm referring else. to these other human rights. <laughs> <laughs> the other part, far more crucial. Part. Yeah. Like beheading, I don't know, beheading. Uh, apparently now they're banning toys that are rainbow colored. Did you hear that? They're no. banning rainbow colored toys because but, of LGBT. But, not that I mean, that's yeah, not equivalent yeah. to that either. But but Jesus Christ, stop saying Jamal Khachuji and other or Jamal yeah. Khachuji and Yemeni. These are not, it's like me saying, you know, Nazis, awful people. They did the Holocaust. Yeah. Also, you know, ex- they issued fines really excessively. They really, no, you exactly. Know, and I mean, you know, what they're talking about. The defense I'm not I'm going to give is not for this article because this is totally different. This is an article, so it makes no sense. Abby Martin, fine. You're with Blinken, you know, you know that the Khashoggi one is like something that like, you know, people like get, it like spark something. All so right. like okay. tactically and strategically fine. But I don't think this Guardian article, the first paragraph <laughs> has anything to do with strategy I'm, or like, uh, or like, you know, doing yeah. what is like getting, best for yeah, getting, getting a reaction uh, out of like, attention. yeah, right. That has nothing to do with that. And this is even worse. At least she named the other ones. They're just like the murder of yeah, Khashoggi. Yeah. <laughs> unless they're saying given president the regime was a pariah unless you know unless the guardian comes and say no we're just saying prior because the u.s finds them a pariah because of this but we know that's maybe, not their defense that's, a, that's not a bad argument considering that they did put the pariah in quotes 
So when you do put it in quotes, it means they But the Atlantic it. wrote the same way. They just put it between M dashes and other human abuses. The article we read the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely preposterous putting that on the same level. But yeah, continue. Yeah. Listen to one Saudi human rights campaigner called Biden's decision to meet the crown prince Mohammed bin Salman a betrayal. Well, why? I wouldn't I mean, call it. A, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like when, when he called King uh, uh, King uh, Salman himself, uh, uh, was that a betrayal? I, I mean, I guess you could say that was a conversation between two pretty much yeah. senile old men. But it's still like. No, but why would you have such an ex- like? Why would you have such? A, you do know Biden is the president of the United States of America, right? He's not like exactly some human rights activist, <laughs> like in the middle yeah. of some st- random street that you found and you're disappointed with their and behavior. Frankly, I mean, this is what why would you be disappointed? What was your expectation? I would argue that your expectation yeah. was, you know, didn't match reality, if you ask me. I mean, I am, frankly, I am surprised it took him so long. I mean, I must say, and again, he's, as you say, even let's put aside the fact that, you know, American presidents are corrupt. He's America, like, that's the thing. I don't want, I don't want to have great, I don't want Iran to become a client state of the U.S., but I do want to have relations with America, and I don't want them constant. like, you know, I, in a way, I feel like a hypocrite to say that Biden shouldn't go to Saudi mm-hmm. Arabia, because frankly, Biden is in no position to lecture Saudi Arabia on human rights. Yeah. If, if somebody is going to lecture Saudi Arabia on human rights, it should be an international organization or an organization with some track trick. It's not like, you know, Iran can't go to, you know, Syria, like, I don't know, to France and talk about the workers, right? It's ridiculous <laughs> what you're talking about. Like, who are you? <laughs> so in a way, I actually do think... As a president, his job is really to serve the American people and their interests. So, yeah. what do you mean betrayal? Like he's serving the American people? Like, like, I, yeah, I, no, no, no. But I would say supporting the Yemeni, like that's a, if anything, that's like a that's the biggest thing he shouldn't do. If and not yeah. like calling up, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so they, they, you know, they're everybody's angry at Biden. I think that's the theme of our episode, isn't it? Like everybody's upset at Poor Biden. Guy. I'm not Poor upset guy. at. Him. I'm not upset at him, but his team needs to do better. <laughs> but um, so I had this fantastic article. Where is it? Lined up. Oh fuck! What? Oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It opened before, but now it's not opening. You know, it's put yeah, behind yeah. the paywall now. Jesus. It was so good. Who was it by? By Tom Nichols. No, okay, I'm just by, gonna... by who? The Atlantic or? Atla- like, the Atlantic. Uh, yeah, you're, reading yeah. tw- <laughs> you're reading so many Atlantic articles. <laughs> Jesus. No, but I'm using like different IP. <laughs> I'm trying all the tricks, man. Motherfuckers, they catch up with me. But okay. I mean, the main thing was the beginning. The, the Atlantic came out with an article that only the Atlantic could <laughs> come out. I think it's uh, the Atlantic Daily by Tom Nichols. Leave Joe Biden alone. <laughs> Biden's been a good president, but Republicans want to impeach him and some Democrats want to replace him. And then he goes on to list some of his non-achievements, I would argue. And, uh, you know, it, it, the whole thing is just... Really, really, Biden's been oh, a good president, but Republicans want him. Okay, do you agree with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm really curious what his justification is, but because on mine too, it's not letting me read. But from past experience, there's a good chance he doesn't even Tom doesn't even attempt to say like to even give well, like they, one did, sentence of Tom why. Was but maybe great, he does. Administration has its ups and downs. Today, I examine why Biden. White House is taking more than its fair share of hits. But first, here are three great news stories from the Atlantic. <laughs> so this was clearly lit- written by a child for children uh, r- largely residing in Washington, Virginia area. A steady hand. Any evaluation of a president's f- performance usually begins with a sole bearing about whether the writer voted for or against the incumbent. I voted for Joe Biden and I like him. <laughs> Ooh, what a revelation. <laughs> what a, wouldn't have guessed in a million years. 
I'm not however a partisan Democrat. Uh-huh. No, no, I'm sure I mean, you're not. You're beyond partisan. <laughs> <laughs> you're a paid member of the. Yeah. And I was never a member of the Democratic Party. So well, how did what you do vote? you mean by member? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you say he voted for Biden? Yes, yes, he voted. I mean, but he except, was not a member. But outside of New York, I think you have to be like in a lot of places. You have to be a member in primary. In oh, true, primary. in primaries only, of course. No, yeah, no, yeah, my no. bad. So he didn't vote during the primaries, though. Oh, supporting Biden. We don't know. It depends on the yeah. Depends uh, it depends on, the on this state. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know this guy. <laughs> Stop asking. <laughs> He's sharing it. He's telling us everything. Wait. <laughs> With scientific research or no? Does no, no. Have scientific. <laughs> there is no. Science. We'll get to scientific research. Yeah, we will. <laughs> uh, in parentheses, my par- parents were typical depression era blue collar democrats turned post 1968 republicans oh. in college i became a new england moderate conservative republic i by the way atlantic <laughs> washington post and your guardian doesn't do that at least he give us your their whole life story <laughs> yeah, I I like i used to be this then that happened then my cousin gave me a ride and i had to talk with him and now i am a little bit oh fuck off who cares but yes then i i I became a New England moderate conservative Republican, but I worked for a centrist Democrat on Beacon Hill. So he's your typical useless. Yeah, thank you for that. And for a, yeah, and for a moderate Republican, the late John Haynes. Just Man, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm so good. This in the Senate. <laughs> I don't understand what any of has to do with Biden <laughs> and why I should leave Biden alone. And so I always kind of liked Biden as someone to whom I could relate. A working class centrist who spoke his mind, even when his thoughts were garbled or when he seemed, or when his thoughts were garbled, you mean when he's got dementia, that's not garbled, my friend, or when he seemed comically full of himself. I love how this idiot, I mean, I don't understand how his work, I mean, I guess his experience at selling out both to Republicans and Democrats (laughs) made him sympathize with Joe Biden. The Joe Biden who ran in 2020 appeared wiser, sadder, somewhat deflated, and seemed to be taking on the presidency as a public service and a burden. Again, all of these are signs of dementia, my friend. It has nothing. <laughs> Man, he doesn't know he's the president. I've never heard anybody suck up to anyone like this. I mean, Jesus yes. Christ. You know those cults in India and Pakistan yeah. where there's a leader that they have to kiss the But at least that leader is in front of them and stuff. You understand why that <laughs> sucking up is taking you place. Don't know, you don't know maybe you'll, Biden is in- you'll disappear if you don't kiss the guy's feet. I don't know what will happen to you, so I don't judge, <laughs> but I don't know. Time and tragedy had tempered Biden. Again, dementia. <laughs> it's not time. And-, <laughs> and I liked him even more than I did in his flashier Jason Sudeikis like youth. Jason Sudeikis did Biden on SN, which is again, I, I mean, you, I mean, I do, can't believe anybody liked Biden, but, let alone like. There's him no more. way anyone can get mad at this article ever. It's just <laughs> the funny is nonsensical. I feel bad for this writer guy if he's like honest. No, no, and listen, these days I think he's done a pretty good job, especially given the fact that he's dealing with a pandemic, revelations about an attempted American coup d'etat. And I, for, I swear to God, when I read that, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Guess what he's talking about. Of course, but that, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't I, talk about I, that topic. You know, oh, is it, is it gone that far? It's like, we, we don't say the name. Is that in the show. first month of the year? It happened the first month of the year? Yes. yes yeah, I don't yes. talk about that event. You don't say the name. Okay. Are you going Trump? <laughs> because Trump has banned the mentioning of January 6th on, oh, his, right. at, on his Twitter clone or whatever. I didn't know. Truth, whatever it's called. Yeah. But I swear to God, I was just for a moment, I was like, what? What? There was a good <laughs> huh? I was like, yeah. revelation about an act. And I'm, by the way, one of those people who's a bit like, I'm not one of those leftists who think, I think if you attack a federal building in that way, you should be treated as harshly as possible. But it wasn't a coup d'etat. Like, that's again, different. As long as you but that's military. different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Making it seem like it's much more than what it was. That's the part that's um, that's the bullshit. But then, look, after she's dealing with a pandemic, okay, that's half true. Revelation about attempted American coup d'etat, that's kind of bullshit. 
and an economic slowdown over which he had no control. He had no control. He was just American president. So I thought he's done good then. What has he done then? I mean, look, I, I think American presidents are puppets, yeah. but these are the people exactly, who are, yeah, these absolutely, are yeah, this is the most important position in the free world. He's a leader of the free but world. But leave him alone. Oh, and by the way, Colin, he's also managed in parentheses so far to, he- to heat off World War III and a possible nuclear conflict. Huh. Wow. Has he? Well, uh, yeah. I feel like he's fueled it, hasn't he? I think we live in, uh, yeah, she lives in the upside world now, or we live in upside, and Tom, it's a he. So I don't know what's going on, but we are not clearly seeing the same. Yeah, no, I, like, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't have anything to say to this person. <laughs> we, we seem to, we seem to, or you specifically, he's saying, you seem to forget that this is a job one for every American president. But while we are griping, griping about the gas prices over which Biden has also no control, what was his point then? What was the point of Biden if he has no control over gas prices? Or what is the point of a president? Can you please explain to me? Uh, I Oh, just, oh, sorry, I forgot. Just heating off a nuclear war. That's the only <laughs> thing they have, which is she, he's doing great yet. Well done. With and that. how did he stop it? <laughs> the Russians are replying. They, they're re- re- replaying the Eastern Front against 40 million Ukrainians and also threatening NATO. By the way, I mean, you're such an idiot. If the Russians are replaying the Eastern Front, that means they're fighting the fucking Nazis. <laughs> so you're in that analogy, you become like... Geez. It's true. It's been reassuring to have a steady hand in charge of our foreign policy. A steady <laughs> hand! As we discussed earlier... Everybody from Emran Khan to Bolsonaro to Mexico, like from left, to right, everybody's saying we had better relations with Trump, yeah. not with Obama, with Trump. Anyway, so why can't the president catch a break? The public blames him for almost everything and his approval rating are cratering. Uh, what's going on here? Forget about the Republicans controlled by their vacuous member. I would say the fringe, but they are now the base Oh my God, what a, I'm sure Republicans reading this one. He, uh, he's calling our base fringe, our heart is broken. They have fallen into a vortex of nihilism and desperation. You don't, I know, fuck you, no. You, you are the nihilist actually. They are almost the luck to win the house in 2020, but they're not sure why they want it other than to protect themselves both from having to live among their own constituents and the slow but a steady approach of justice for GOP's involvement in January 6th. Nobody, they want it because unlike you, they know what to do with power, unlike Democrats. Man. Which you are not a partisan Democrat, clearly. Clearly not a partisan Democrat. Is this an, is this an op-ed, by the way? No, no, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like less than an op-ed. It was like attached to their news. No, the, no, no, the, I mean, I was going <laughs> to say, I mean, of course not a news story and it's not even yeah, yeah. op-ed, it's like an imaginary piece. Like, I mean, you know, the op-ed has to at least give your opinion on like reality. No, she, but, but, but it has some, some really good references. Huh. As USA Today columnist Jill <laughs> Lawrence pointed out this morning, the Republicans are determined to this impeach morning. Biden because they have no other play. Yeah, I mean, this morning I saw that. <laughs> yeah, threw it in yeah. this article. <laughs> Even if it's not what voters want. Oh my God, what do you think? If, if Republicans get elected, then they decide what voters want, you fucking idiot. It's what, in, it's what enough for, of their voters, it's what enough of their voters want. And it will make sufficient noise to cover the lack of plan to govern the country. Maybe Democrats once in a while should try to do what enough of their voters want. Just once, just fucking once do something. For fuck's sake, like really, just yeah. try it, just try it. Not that I'm a big fan of Democrat policies either, but whatever, just, just to complain about Republicans. One might have hoped, however, and by one I mean me, <laughs> <laughs> that the Democrats would hold their fire and stop their whispering about what happens if Biden steps down or even dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry i didn't see that coming Man. i didn't think it would like, <laughs> yeah or even <laughs> all right okay and if biden does hold on well there are some 
prominent young Democrats who haven't decided if they're going to support him. And by young Democrats, I mean Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We're going to talk about tomorrow a lot. Did you see that, her saying that in an interview that, I don't know, I'm going to, right now we are busy with winning a majority, but, you know, we're going to see what happens. God, what a, Man, who is this article written for? I can't for the life of me. Joe, this these type of articles, Chapel Trap House pointed this out with that. No, but I know I feel like I know what Max explanation does. you're gonna give, but I feel like this won't even make that. But go ahead. My explanation is with the same with Matt Doss articles. This article less so, but Matt does for sure is a signal to people who would employ you. Because yeah. who would who reads uh, Fair Atlantic, enough, man. but this and one is too much of a like a weird suck up. Like I mean, oh, this is this is probably this is to to get like to say I'm the best in the newsroom, aren't I? I'm the most. But I mean, you know, I I'm feel like most... this would be even off putting to people who would want to read this and hire people like this. I mean, yeah, uh, well, uh, maybe yeah. too hard. Yeah, but in the room, maybe it helps with you with the you know in the virtue signaling like war this is like listen don't take weapon. your virtue signaling too far we saw what happened in washington post even in any kind of situation just you might go overboard you know you you think that you're playing the game right but you just take it too I far i mean it's not yeah this is not even virtual signaling or that's part of it it's such a kissing ass yeah article, i know as you say it's so ch- and don't take yeah. it yeah you take it too far sometimes people don't like their asses being kissed that much at times it's like off putting there's a bit know. of an art to it biden doesn't know but like I'm, even the others right, who are reading there, there's a little bit of an art to these things at that yes, point yes, you can't yes. be that transparent <laughs> yeah exactly you should, and uh, we're gonna talk about it later but the boys man even in the boys they refer to that when the deep is kissing ass of the homelander and mm. then a train is like he's a great man but the way you kiss his ass is just disgusting <laughs> and i i would say what's but you're 100 percent right because as you say who is this for because biden is in not charge like at least kiss the ass of kamala harris or Pete Buttigieg <laughs> or somebody who's gonna be in you know what i mean who yeah. is he writing this to? I, mean, I, I know i think this person genuinely like likes biden though i don't think yeah, he's lying this, this is a genuine yeah. freak <laughs> My suspicious is that the full weight of our foreign and domestic crisis has not broken through the self-absorption and solip- solipsism, solipsism, I don't know that word, solipsism of not only our political parties, but the American public. Oh my God, are you saying the American public? <laughs> this guy is a child. Oh my God, the American public is not paying attention to real issues. Oh my God, as if any public anywhere in the world is. Yeah. People are busy paying attention to their own fucking lives, you idiot. We are just not capable of understanding that at home. We are inches away from the meltdown of our constitutional system of government. And abroad, we are one errant cruise missile away from a nuclear crisis. Jesus Christ. But this is all the president's fault because Joe Biden is old and talks like, well, <laughs> Joe Biden. No. Wait, did you add that? or is it... <laughs> No, no, that's, no, no, that was it. <laughs> but the, the, I mean, he's, he's criticized because he doesn't do anything because his administration, his party, they haven't done anything. This is part of a more general problem in American politics. Cap. Yeah, I, mean, the, I added the cap. <laughs> This wasn't this wasn't written yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah. We have come to regard presidency as a temporary appointment to Superman and the White House as a gleaming fortress of solitude full of potential miracles. In doing so, we let ourselves off the hook for any responsibility, either for our own actions or as voters or for any requirements to face our problems together with resilience and understanding. So again, as always, it's normal people's fault for you know, yeah. voting for Joe Biden. I, I don't, I, you know, don't, I know, I'm not too yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm not, because I mean, yeah. because they, they don't think presidency is being a Superman, but when the president promises them that he's going to control that and control this, and then he, like, I, I mean, even to the limited extent that he promised things, uh, he didn't tell it. So, <laughs> but this article, it's just Jesus, so good. man, that was, so good. that was insanely weird. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the article we are, we are reading later, that's even more insane. Yeah, frankly. but, but I, yeah. 
I mean, the are, take, man, everything, man. Yeah. And what always amazes me is like, you know, it doesn't amaze me, but like, you know, this person wrote this and at the very least, like it's the first level of editor, right? Read it and approved yeah, it, yeah. Sure, right? Sure, Tom. Sure, and, Tom. Uh, yeah. Tom, go ahead. And it yeah. caught no one else's attention in the edit first stuff. It was, this was just like a normal piece to write. I mean, I, I think this type of pieces may be encouraged though. Okay? Yeah. I, not exactly as fucking. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, yeah, he went too far. <laughs> He's like, they have, okay, look, look, Tom, Tom, we need to have a meeting. We said we need you to kiss the ass of the president, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, can you be a bit less transparent? Exactly. This is just right? like, you know, try to focus on something he actually like did or say, at least, you know, like mentioned that. But yeah, it, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? But I think this type of article right now in Washington Post, New York Times and Atlantic are encouraged because of the upcoming uh, midterm elections and the pro- potential alienation of the part. Democratic perhaps, party. perhaps. But it's like, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but did the, did the Atlantic do like a branding a few years ago, like a rebranding? Were they like, kind of dying and become bigger again as a as an outlet or were they always at this would they always like you know at this they've level, always this been pretty i don't i don't think they were i think washington post was dying and then bezos has stepped in but no i don't know i don't really know about hmm. enough about the atlantics but i know the foreign policy wise they're always the most fun to read to be honest hmm. like consistency providing like nonsensical take at least since the rock war seriously. from what I recall. It's insane. Yeah. Wow, no, seriously. Yeah, for, yeah I, know. I mean, they're, they're oh, kind no, of cable to... news level. Uh, like, they're like a cable yeah. news level written, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah, but better. Like, yeah, it's slightly more crazy, but with references. So both more, ra- like, they have concrete examples, but they have crazier yeah. conclusions. And I have to, I have to applaud like, you know, since at least 20, 2001, so more than 20 years, they've been providing, you know, <laughs> complete nonsensical like takes on Man, that was insane. <laughs> so that was that. Then considering that we were on the, you know, uh, U.S. beat, let's say, mm-hmm. I thought, the U.S.-Iranian negotiations seem to be, uh, you know, uh, it's very weird, man. I don't know. It is still in the really bad position that it was the other. After Iran, basically, they removed some cameras and they removed the device that, um, you know, measures the uh, yeah. nuclear something. Again, I don't know. You know, nuclear, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know, that uh, the, the, the IAEA was like, oh, this is this has made it much more difficult to return to the deal. U.S. then issued a a statement saying that Iran's actions has made it difficult to make the deal, to revive the deal. Then uh, you also had, again, a couple of Iranian military people apparently were killed. Details are very scant on that, but it's potentially Israel activity. Then Iran said that those uh, issues that Daya had before they removed the cameras and all that about potentially in some places there were nuclear material that there shouldn't have been. Those are probably Israeli sabotage. So that, you know, that didn't help. Now, Iranian foreign minister confirmed that they are negotiating through a, they are negotiating through back channels with a US envoy. So who knows what's going on. At the same time, um, uh, you know, all the American, uh, you know, lobbyists for NEK, the group we talked about before, Mm -hmm. and Israel are active, John Bolton, um, gave interview saying that if we revive the deal, um, the security of the region and the, you know, uh, let me just check what was, what did he exactly say? Um, sorry. No. Oh, uh, he said there is more chance of a war between Israel and Iran if they revive the deal, yeah. which I mean, to be honest, I don't think there is any chance of war between Israel and Iran ever. Like, yeah. not. It's all, they, it's they just, just talk a bit. Yeah, it's yeah. just Israel wants to become, look, as we talked about, the US is retreating from the region. 
Israel is best positioned to replace America as the security guarantor for Arab states. Because frankly, Arab states' mm. military is just ridiculous. They don't really, they don't have a military. Like this, according to US forces, Turkish or Iranian military can cut through them like a knife in a butter. This is according to US military. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know why, but I really don't understand it because Usually, when you have a U.S. trained military, they do good. Like Pakistani I mean, military used to be really good. Iranian but they military. They need people to the... train, though. Well, they have poor populations that you know. But which Arab countries are you talking about, though? Like you know, some Arabia. of them are so small, though. Yeah, but the Gulf countries. I mean, I was thinking. Oh, those are jokes. Yeah, those are like cities. They. I don't accept Luxembourg to have a. Mm-hmm. Egypt is the only one that basically has a military and the military is awful. Like it's like that surprises shit. me. I thought it was the complete opposite around. I mean, I, I thought I mean I know that I know you don't disagree that the military is very big and involved in everything, but I didn't know that when oh, it yeah, came yeah. to fighting capacity or things like that and training that they're that they're not, you know, at a decent yeah, level bad. at least. It's bad. interesting. I mean, look, I'm not, I mean, they're better than a lot of countries yeah. in the region and all that. I don't want. I'm, no, but especially I'm, for a country where the military plays such a big yeah. role as well. That's the thing, too. That's what makes it a bit surprising. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the military guy is a president, right? He's still the president. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I haven't yeah. checked yeah. in a while, to be honest. Has it been a coup? No? Okay. I'll see. Yeah, he's still there. But compared to Pakistan, for example, or even they are India level. Egypt is India level fighting without the equipment, you know, mm-hmm. or Turkey level. Because Turkey is not that good at fighting either, but they're good at equipment. They have amazing, like, device. Like, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, that's why Israel is now trying to, and is largely competing with Turkey. To a lesser extent, Iran to act as the security guarantor for Arab states, basically, because they have nuclear weapons, they have good yeah, army, yeah. they are, you know, all of that. If they, they can, though, but they have no money to throw around, though, like the US. Though, Israel? So. Not to that extent, would they, like, you know? No money? No. But the money would but come. But they don't from need US. money, that's yeah. True. No, no, that's true. Yeah. But they can sell equipment and they have a military industrial complex, although they're a bit specific in the stuff that they produce. And more importantly, there could be the agreements like, Mm -hmm. you know, sort of like the, you know, uh, sort of NATO like agreements type thing. You know, this is just like back in the days after uh, World War II when, uh, you know, US wanted to set up CENTO or something Mm -hmm. in the Middle East as against the Soviets. Now they want to set up a sort of Arab-Israeli alliance against Iran. Turkey is doing its own thing. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, Qatar, come with me. I'll protect you, Qatar. Come on, come on. I have a bad time here. It's like, no. <laughs> Turkey is playing like its own game. Iran is saying, why are you afraid of me? I don't want to take over your things. I don't want to take your things away. No, no, I'm not after your things at all. We just look at... <laughs> Iran, it's just so yeah. funny, the whole Middle East. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, so that... Uh, sorry, what, what were we talking about? No, we just spoke about Iran, and I'm guessing here yeah, you're yeah, going to transition to Turkey. But I just want to make one quick no, no, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, this just hit me about the nuclear stuff. You know, the nuclear um, issue, Iran, US, is probably one of the stories that you follow the closest, right? Am I mistaken in that? Or this is like, Sadly. you know, the nuclear, you follow very closely, right? Yeah, but out of I all have. the stories that we've done so far today, right? And that we're going to do, it's like the one that you're like the least sure to talk about, right? And that could come down to two things. One is it is a very, you know, it's like, you know, it's not in front of your eyes. It's all back meetings. It's like almost impossible to really know what's going on. And the second one is like, you know, I guess maybe it's the thing like the more, you know, the less, you know, so the less you want to say, you know, you know what I mean? But I think that's it's a true, bit of the first one too, though, because I mean, you know, what there's, there's no media reporting on it. Just every two days, one says that it's progressing and the other or the same person two days later says that, it's not progressing, right? Like back and forth, back and forth. That's I, all, yeah, all you kind of hear, at least, at least when you don't really deep into dive into it deeply. I feel like I've, I'm in a toxic relationship. <laughs> my girlfriend keeps cheating on me, and then I forgive her, 
And it's like, no, no, it's, it's good. Now I'm telling you the truth. This time it's definitely going to fail. It's definitely going to fail negotiation. Oh, no. No, it's revised. So oh, I'm sorry. It's gonna, they're going to sign it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, no, no. They're, it, it just the whole thing is yeah. very... After the yeah. weekend, I promise you. Now it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Come back Monday. <laughs> ridiculous story it's the most and it's been going on for iranians it's been going on for two decades now. <laughs> yeah. Since, like rohani rohani is started as a negotiator <laughs> on the nuclear talks and became a president and now he's not a president like he's out completely it, yeah. oh my god anyways anyways so moving on to iran turkey and israel which we mentioned there was quite an interesting story that uh, there was this uh, there was this report that apparently I don't know where it has started. I don't know which report came first, but let me just re- read this from Times of India. Israel issues highest travel warning for a stumble over possible attack by Iran. So there was this thing that apparently the Turkish authorities arrested a couple of Iranians that are suspected to be part of Iranian military. And Israel is now issuing that Iran is, might be, you know, uh, uh, might be, planning terrorist activities in Turkey against Israel as revenge for, you know, their terrorist activities in Iran. Iran is denying it, obviously. I don't know. Sounds Uh, like a big, I haven't read the story. I haven't said it just sounds like a big baloney bullshit to me, but. Turkey is saying that to Turkey, saying we have everything under control. Everything is secure, but they did arrest a couple of Iranians. So it's not like, mm-hmm. it's not yeah, a nothing yeah, burger for sure. But at the same time, Iran, it seems like a huge risk for Iran. It's not yeah. that I don't think Iran would want to do that. Of course, they would want to do that. But, it's but what, just, just normal citizens, normal Israeli citizens in Turkey, they're saying would be targeted? I mean, is there any precedent yes. in, in oh, that uh, Iran <laughs> targeting citizens like that in recent times, recent years? I mean... It's just funny. It's like Iran Israel- doesn't recognize Israel as an entity. Therefore, based on, according to Iran, you could argue, although since Khatam years, they have clarified that they would which only is the 90s. state of Israel. Yeah, which is yeah, like 90s. over two decades. Or to, but but there was the attack in, you know, there was that famous attack in Argentina against the mm. Jewish center. So I don't know. How, was that a public building? Yeah. Was that a state building? I don't know. But So I don't know the precedent for that, for sure. But it's, again, yeah. For like man, Iran doing that in Turkey, risking its relations yeah. with Turkey. Why? It's one of its biggest allies. You know, I just found that which is the most one of the most disgusting things I found. Iran hasn't officially recognized the Armenian genocide, mm. even mm. though Armenia part of the Armenian genocide happened in Iran. The city of Salmos was a Armenian city that uh, the Ottoman pieces of shit invaded and uh, with, by the way, help of some Kurdish uh, people, apparently ter- tribal leaders, killed all the Armenians. So, uh, you know, it, and Iran, you know, Iran is very careful with this. I, I don't know. It seems very odd to me if Iran would. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't make any doesn't doesn't make any sense to me, but hey. Yeah, well, that's the rational. Iran did not immediately comment on the allegations. Iran has accused Israel of killing on May 22nd an Islamic Revolutionary Guard colonel uh, uh, shot and killed by two motorcyclists in east of Tehran and has vowed to avenge his death. So I guess the avenge his death part is a thing, is there. But then again, Turkey is saying, no, everything is under control. Yeah. Everything is, everything is. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I have one. Or the gun. So, uh, yeah. Now, anything else on that? Do you want to comment? No, no, right. no, no, no. Now, talking of Turkey, the issue with Turkey and Sweden and Finland yeah. trying to join NATO continues. So there were apparently some reports that, you know, Sweden is trying to meet some of the demands of Turkey and there are talks. But this was also reported by Guardian. Turkey threatens years delay to Swedish and Finnish entry to NATO. Issue may derail alliance summit as Ankara digs in on on accusations that Nordic countries harbor terrorists. So all I have to say right now to all my Kurdish brother and friends, Get out of his Scandinavia. <laughs> get out. Get out. 
Yeah. And Kur- Kurdish people are like the one people that have been betrayed by every, mm-hmm. like they have, like Iranians betrayed them in 70s, Arabs betrayed them before that, Turks betrayed them in a post-World War I type thing. America's betrayed them like every other mm-hmm. week. Israel betrayed them mm-hmm. like once or twice. Like everybody's yeah. betrayed them. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just saying. <clears throat> and I mean, you know, I mean, Turkey's approach towards like, uh, you know, everything that's occurred is complete um, bullshit and horrible and all this. But putting that aside, the fact that Turkey has this hilarious power over NATO and Sweden <laughs> and Finland is absolutely <laughs> hilarious. So, I mean, their demands are absolute garbage and bullshit right and if Kurd, no, if well, Kurd, no 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 but listen if the Kurds do perform terrorist things I mean then you have to look into the context of how you're you, yes, you're treating yes. them and all that so but yeah of course with that but I mean but in general of course it's all like bullshit and Turkey's the big state and everything's their responsibility the, the fact that they have this power over Sweden <laughs> Finland and NATO I, I mean, is look, really funny I, I, no, it's I would, so funny it's funny, and I, in a way, I kind of, I must say, I kind of like it because, mm. look, those countries do use Kurdish groups or other groups as a way to, you know, uh, sow discontent mm. and sow the seeds of division in the country and finance them. I, we see it every, in Iran. But you are right, though, the primary responsibility is with the Turkish government to prevent that. Of course, they're going to do that. That's what every nation does to other nations. That's the name of the game. So it can't be upset about it yeah. but it's just so funny that the court i find funny that court every like you can like they go to the nicest like we are in luxembourg now <laughs> like nobody and then somebody comes in a restaurant and just kills every <laughs> kurdish like leader it's like what the hell like we can't like anywhere like they, they have to go to mars at this point they have to align themselves to man mars. but turkey and when it comes to this kurd like i haven't yes, seen like yes, a country be that serious over something like and I've even heard stories like at the insane micro level and stuff when they're able to hold a particular organization or someone responsible for something, the smallest thing they will when it comes to this issue. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, man. I, I, I must say it's not something, it's something that popularly supported us from my Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, I never like thought I, of that actually. In my experiences, like it's not a, the Putin thing in Russia, it's support mm. paid like my, my again. I'm going analogical. Yeah. I don't know what the I don't know the the, the uh, polls are saying. You know that type of thing. But yeah, so Turkey is basically a play is <laughs> cock blocking uh, <laughs> Sweden and <laughs> Finland, and he's not allowing them to you know join the orgy that is NATO. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Turkey has said it's willing to delay Swedish and Finnish membership of NATO for more than a year unless it receives satisfactory assurances that the uh, Nordic countries are willing to address support for Kurdish group it regards as terrorist organizations. Uh, Finland's prime minister said on Tuesday that the two nations NATO application could stall if the issue is not resolved before a vital summit due to a start in Ma- Madrid on 29th of June. I, th- I was thinking maybe Sweden and Finland, the fact that they issued the request so fast after the whole Russian thing, maybe that was part of their strategy of like, oh, we want to join NATO America, but the uh, Turkeys, <laughs> oh, we would love to pay 2% GDP to you <laughs> for military, but, oh. Mm. I don't know. I don't think... They thought that long term and that strategically no no <laughs> that... <laughs> they're that is smart no <laughs> maybe they are right. uh, yeah, yeah. they were probably in a sauna getting drunk and they're like <laughs> oh fuck it let's change the name <laughs> <laughs> uh turkey accuses sweden and finland of harboring alleged members of kurdistan's workers party and also objects to their decision in 2019 to ban arm exports to ankara due to Turkey's military operations in Syria. Turkey has gone on a public diplomacy offensive to highlight Swedish support for Kurdish groups in northern Syria that is linked to the PKK. PKK. I, I think they are referring to, um, what was it, the uh, region called Rejavo? Rejavo? Rajavo, that yeah, was the sure. Turkish control. And they're, they're doing some weird experiments with anarchist sort of anarchic communities or. <laughs> I know you hate coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never yeah. heard of that though. Yeah. 
And uh, so uh, it links to PKK. Designated as a terrorist organization in the EU, US, and Turkey, and is planning to stage a fringe meeting on the issue at the NATO summit. So Turkey is doing full blow. <laughs> but they are handing out leaflets. <laughs> Come to our meeting about terrorists. Code. Come on. Come on. Do it. It's good for Turkey. Come on, come on. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, and yeah. the usual stuff from Turkey that this is a national interest for yeah. us and all that. But, interesting yeah, power that Turkey has. It's just a <laughs> interesting country. It's in its own category of kind of power a little bit. I like, regard. I mean, I must say, though, it's fair enough. They do have the second largest military. Yeah. NATO. I mean, in Syria, they they were doing all the dirty work yeah. for America. They were right. It wasn't like the Sweden was running yeah. the rat lines. It was the you know it was Turks who were yeah. getting their hands dirty, helping ISIS leaders being you know in their hospitals and all that. What you want? So, yeah, yeah, and I mean, of course, I'm sure it went with their interests, but they also took some risks. I mean, you know, they were against Russia, yeah. really. You know, and there were they were. A few oh yeah, the airplane. Do you remember the yeah, airplane? Exactly almost led to yeah they're yeah so and what what did sweden do what they <laughs> issued a stern like warning against very bad boys you are you know in yeah. syria get together and so fuck yeah. up <laughs> right sam let's move on to afghanistan what are some so, of the unfortunate things happening there oh I mean, that a, we are going to cover i'm sure there are a lot of not so unfortunate Yes, exactly. But this is not exactly about Afghanistan internally, but this article made the rounds in Persian circles and it was a big deal. So I thought we talk about it. This is from Wall Street Journals. By the way, Wall Street Journal and Financial Times so much better than Washington Post, New York yeah. Times or The Atlantic. So much better in my view. Anyway. So high ranking Afghan officials escaped to luxury homes abroad as Afghan evacuees struggle worldwide. Some top former officials have landed in villas, beachfront homes. So Washington, some senior Afghan officials and their families spend millions purchasing expensive homes in the U S and abroad in final years of the war, which became luxurious landing landings when they escaped the escalating violence in Afghanistan. According to a Wall Street Journal review of public documents, interviews, and other records, some officials who held top jobs during former Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's tenure, Mm -hmm. which started in 2014, now are living in mansions along California's coast, uh, California's coast. Abroad, cluster of former officials and lawmakers reside in major European cities, the United Arab Emirates, and Turkey, the records and interviews show. Yep. So I, w- I wasn't subscribed to Wall Street Journal, but I, I do can read Persian. So oh yeah, it's a, that's yeah. that's that's how I got mm-hmm. to the meat of this story. So one of the p- people's covered uh, uh, is Ashraf Ghani. Ashraf Ghani, as we covered, he he's allegedly uh, es- uh, uh, escaped with millions of dollars to, yeah. and he's living in UAE. The funniest part is that uh, he, uh, according uh, uh, according to UAE, he, they're like it's a humanitarian thing, mm. you know. So, like I love like how humanitarian, yeah, like efforts. I mean, this is by the way that's again like, humanitarian. At least use the right thing. It's like human rights. I don't like. I feel like there are like easier ways <laughs> yeah. if you gotta frame it. Like at least. Yeah, well, that's probably what I, I yeah. don't know what. True, 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 true. But he's, I mean, if it was a, it is surprise. You know what? It pisses me off. In my view, I sometimes we talk about the Arab-Israeli conflict, for example, Arab-Palestinian conflict. And in my view, since uh, 20, 30 years ago, Israel has clearly shown that it's it's won the war. First of all, secondly, it has no intention of compromising. So why doesn't UAE and Abu Dhabi and uh, all these rich, super rich nations uh, give some better conditions to Palestinian refugees and bring them, you know, uh, uh, give them some. No, but Ashraf Ghani has to stay in a five star St. Saint- Regis, St. Regis Abu Dhabi hotel. He he has to stay there for humanitarian yeah. reasons. Yeah, no, we couldn't. You couldn't give him a shack mm-hmm. for humanitarian reasons. He had to stay in the five star thing. I guess uh, until you get the 
you know, bank information to where he's keeping the ten million yeah. dollars. <laughs> However, he another, ran away with another person is Hamdullah Mohab. He's a, he was a national security advisor to uh, uh, Ashraf Ghani. His wife is American, so uh, you know he had prior connections uh, to in um, to uh, America. So all that he's staying in Shangri La Hotel mm -hmm. in Abu Dhabi. These people so modest, you know. It's just <laughs> the modesty is what gets me. So and all the again is being paid by UAE and all that. Then we've got uh, Akhil Hakimi. Uh, uh, he was a, uh, how do you say it? He was a minister of assets. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's yeah, not of, a bad job. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, 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 something like that. He was minister of assets in Ashraf Ghani's um, uh, 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 cabinet. He has bought over at least, at least, sorry, at least 10 houses in California. <laughs> oh, Jesus. At, 10 houses in California. In, I mean, uh, he he, he uh, he's him and his wife have uh -huh. a how it's a company. It's a they have a housing company called Zilla Group. They are part of the Zilla Group, and he's like you know it's the whole thing is under the wife's name and all that. Uh, they have they have one house that has five rooms, a swimming pool in Laguna Niguel near the beach Laguna Nigua our American audience probably yeah. can tell us better if uh, uh, that house just that one house is worth 2.5 million dollars yeah damn so but the 10 houses together are valued above 10 million dollars wow. so you know they they have a house in Orange County as well which is by the way I feel like this is copying Iranians a bit there. Orange <laughs> County is our and Koreans thing, okay? It belongs to Iranians and Koreans. Leave it alone. Anyway, another guy is Khaled Payande. He was the financial minister. <laughs> you know, it's just, oh, man. Another guy who's also been involved with the Zillow thing. Uh, he, he's one of the few that responded to the article and said it's misleading, I'm sure. Mm. His view, it's very <laughs> uh, in a, yeah. He has a couple of houses, not ten. The, the most interesting one to me was Abdul Rashim Dustem. Abdul Rashim Dustem, who I hope you put the picture up, is one of these fake military warlords in Afghanistan who's been a warlord for the last at mm -hmm. least three, four decades. He's been fighting everyone and anybody he's changed every side and uh, he always appears in oh this guy yeah, yeah yeah i heard you talk about yeah. him yeah, yeah he, he's a psycho well he's one of the better psychos he's and not he was former Islamic vice psycho. president right yeah 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 he's yeah, a, he's been, yeah he's, but the best thing about dustam is that he always appears in these military attires with mm -hmm. so many goddamn mm -hmm. i mean uh, so many medals that you're like has had, like if you had won that many medals, you would think Afghanistan is a stable country. At this <laughs> point. Like you know, usually countries that like conquer other countries, the generals don't have yeah. this many medals. So according to them, he has a massive house in Turkey. He's been partying and having been partying with some really like famous people in Turkey, like having famous Turkish singers at the party. There are other people in the report: Atta Muhammad Nur. Mustafa Mustafar, all like they're all pretty much in these guys. These guys are all in Turkey and all that. So, you know, uh, oh, sorry, one of them is in uh, Atom Mohammed Nur, for example, who was the head of the was the executive head of the party and was a governor of Balkh, has a, a apartment. This guy, to be honest, this guy is a bit of a loser. He has an <laughs> apartment in the Palm Dubai. That's, oh. that's not. I mean, that's like, a yeah, a couple million still. Yeah, but that's like, yeah. isn't that like that's like that's like middle class Iranian and Turkish people <laughs> have that too. Like, you know, it's pretty pathetic <laughs> for somebody who was the governor of Balkh. Yeah, I mean, you would. But think, I mean, like, you anyways. know, exactly. If that mansion was two point five million, and that was a lot. Like, I'm guessing an apartment on Dubai Palm is also like you know, a million or two million dollars. So. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. It's not I so. 
Do you know if Palm is still a ho- like I remember it wasn't that good of area anyway. Like it was good, but it wasn't super good. Yeah, I mean, there's still a bit too. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. They built so much. I don't know where it's ranked in terms of prestige, but I think it's not bad. And I and I think so. Palm has like those apartments. So Palm is like this area that in Dubai they just put sand on it on the water and fake they, island. Yeah, they created uh, an island middle of the water. But I, I think the it houses like a- there though are like. It, or like you know like five six million dollar kind of houses and stuff like that which have like this private beach and stuff there but oh okay makes all so right. there are the apartments and there are also the houses and initially they wanted to build a bunch of palms but i think they just stuck to <laughs> one. to the yes, ones yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know if they finished it they had that do you know that they had the that world island. thing yeah, yeah the i world think, I think that... that project never happened that was just like fucking yeah. Mess. yeah that was so by the way the the environmental damage from these projects i just i can't imagine it's just it's lovely but uh yeah anyway so that was afghanistan i uh you know that was the most um so this uh, is the kind of money thing. that people like you know are able to steal out from afghanistan i don't want to make you know i don't say like i'm sure there's also a lot there's a lot of money and wealth and resources and all the way to make money in afghanistan but just imagine in richer countries like the amount of money that are that are taken you know places around. yeah to to places fair, where they're though, slightly more stable too no, you know but, i don't know but that's the thing though in unstable places yeah, that's and true. that's what you can est- i mean compared to ashraf ghani with biden Biden was in this game for what, like 40 years? And his daughter still has a student loan. But Biden sucks. But, I'm saying like in Iran or something, you know, I think they cash oh, out much oh, more. Yeah, yeah that's in what Iran. I kind of meant. Yeah. Or Iran, Turkey or Saudi. For yeah, Saudi exactly. is the best. That's but, what but I yeah, was referring yeah, to. Yeah, Iran and Turkey is a, yeah, a different level. But Europe and America is yeah. a bit more difficult. No, there you, you have know? to go in the private sector. I mean, there it's yeah. good. They always have an official legal way of doing it. They're like, but, yeah, but, but, yeah. But you it's don't so- need to steal money. Put that back. Put that back. Put, okay. Put- Here's this job offer. You get five times more starting tomorrow. You, it's all legal. You just have to <laughs> look. You do four years as a sort of yeah. an intern in a presidential job, <laughs> and then you get to get a book deal for sixty yeah. million dollars, and exactly. it makes up for it. You know, it's, yeah. you know I, I, you show your grit as well. You know that you can hand, you can wait for the money yeah. to come. You so know, they you always have eat. like a much uh, a legal. Oh. They always have a legal system or around all these things. Typically. Yeah, I was just thinking Russia is awesome, but the problem oh. with Russia is that you could get killed. <laughs> it's not a, like it's not with Iran. <laughs> at the most, you get beaten up, and then you have tea with the guy, and it's over. No, but in you Iran know, I, too, I, I, no. Whenever like the front men or something, when they're ready, when they have to catch someone, when they need they to, you know, to it jail. comes on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they go to jail or Turkey. I don't know about no. In Turkey, they kill you too. In Turkey and Russia, man, they they have like mafia. In Iran, yeah. they don't. They have gangsters. You know, it's sure. a bit like less serious. <laughs> in Iran, they kill you if you say something about the state. That's yeah. when they kill you. So, but they don't like they beat the shit out of. You. There's not so much killing. So you know, but it's uh, yeah. Russia, I would think you can make good like a special <laughs> man. I wish I was in Russia. In, like no, I don't wish. I wish I was one of the people who ended up being oligarchs. <laughs> Early nineties, good period. Good period. And also from Afghanistan, Abdullah Abdullah, who was the like he was the sort of after there was so much problems with the Ashraf Ghani elections both time. He was sort of half president. He was the executive oh, yeah. head and all that. He went for he went to India for a couple of weeks for aid the Fetra and shit. And people were saying he's escaped and all that. Mm-hmm. I must say he's a compared to all the, all the shitty. And that's by the way, Abdullah Abdullah was the guy who America didn't want. He was mm-hmm. the guy who they viewed as pro-Iranian and because he speaks Tajik Persian and all that. And yeah, he's been much better than the rest of them, at least you can say. Uh, you know, so that's good. No, no, definitely. I remember all these characters now that look at their faces from that from that big episode we had done in Afghanistan when yeah, the withdrawal yeah. happened. Yeah. Then going a bit now further down south, heading south, let's talk about Sudan and a bit Ukraine war again. Uh, sad, like uh, you know, I'm trying to learn my, uh, sorry, increase my knowledge of uh, Africa 
Mm. So, but it's gonna start with you know a small mm-hmm. thing. So, can you hear me? My yeah, headphone yeah. might run out. Yeah, no, it just it gave me the Allah. Millions at risk in South Sudan as Ukraine war forces a slashing mm-hmm. of aid. So I thought this connects well with the continue uh, reporting about the wheat uh, problems that yeah. could happen in Africa following the war. The World Food Program has said it is suspending food aid to 1.7 million people in South Sudan as the war in Ukraine sucks funding from the world's crisis-plagued youngest country and causes the price of stables to soar. The UN Emergency Food Assistance Agency said it had planned to deliver aid to more than 6 million acutely food insecure people in South Sudan this year, as it did in 2021, albeit with a smaller uh, rations. So, uh, you know, it's yeah. what can you say? It's yeah. fucking awful. And in the next paragraph, I think it says that the WFP said it would now have to prioritize just 4.5 million of the, of most, the vulnerable most vulnerable people in order to stop them dying of there starvation a, during the lean season. Yeah, There is a quite an interesting infographic Guardian has put, which is uh, put the situation. There is 80, 87,000 people in catastrophic situation. 4.77 million people in crisis, 2.89 million people in emergency, 2.9 million people food stressed, 1. million expected to be food secure, mm. food, yeah, well. to be food secure. So 1.7 are the ones that are food secure, whatever yeah. that is. Uh, my headphone ran out. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, as I read the situation, in South Sudan is worsening, and uh, in the article it points out that South Sudan has gained independence relatively recently, and it's been involved in a civil war, floods, just all things. And frankly, I, I you highly suggest everybody listening to Brianna Gray Joy did an interview on her show about the economics. It was mostly U.S. focused, but I think you can uh, use it as a you can you know just the whole world works like that too, like. Sadly, uh, we decided to, um, you know, uh, we decided to go with this just in time sort of mm. Kaizen, whatever you want to call it, system of ever, ever enhancing efficiency in the business sector. And, you know, not really thinking about political, you know, situations and all that. And it's put significant number of people at risk. I would say, say that it's just so sad that you understand how much of a nation's country's food uh, supply depends on other countries. But at the same time, I don't know what would be the environmental cost if these countries also started trying to produce their own food material. Like It's a very yeah. complex issue. We have to rethink the whole and if you're able to all of them i don't know in that way i mean yeah exactly if they have enough land or whatever or weather yeah yeah exactly but yeah it's very yeah very sad very fucked up but um yeah so and now moving on to south africa um so that was quite interesting uh because it was a bit international i suppose but Mm -hmm. in First of all, in South Africa, first, let's start with that. There is significant allegations of corruption and, uh, uh, you know, uh, sorry, uh, corruption. And there is apparently been a Berkeley and stuff. So listen to this, African news. South Africa president lashes dirty tricks in Berkeley scandal. South African president Cyril Rama. Uh, Ramaphosa on Thursday said he was the victim of dirty tricks in a damaging burglary scandal as a rowdy opposition heckled him in parliament, which sounds so much like Nixon thing with the de- because Nixon was famous for you know dirty tricks, dirty mm. dick and all that. Last week, Ramaphosa was accused of bribing burglars to keep quiet about a February 2020 heist art. Uh, 2020 heist are at his farmhouse where they stole cash worth some four million dollars in recent days we have seen oh, this is a quote in recent days we have seen those who stand to lose the most from the fight against corruption resorting to dirty tricks and intimidations in a bit to get us back down he said in a in a budget speech he he I, from what i recall he's a big businessman in south america so he i mean He's apparently fighting, cor- you know, just like MBS, just like Nor- Mondi. They're all fighting corruption, yeah, but at the course. same time, there's like number of allegations against themselves. <laughs> He's, uh, yeah. 
uh, Ramaphosa. Oh, sorry, I was wrong. Ramaphosa is a former trade unionist who became uh-huh. a. Oh no, I wasn't wrong. So wait, <laughs> Ramaphosa is a former trade unionist who became a hugely <laughs> successful businessman in a in post-apartheid South Africa before entering politics. He took office mm-hmm. in 2018, vowing to clean up the corruption that defined the presidency of pre- predecessor Jacob Zuma, who was just amazingly corrupt mm-hmm. just at a you know, hilarious level. He never reached the fame of people like, you know, what was the guy in Zimbabwe? Oh, yeah. Oh, forgot his name. God, he was funny. Yeah. You know, he never reached his level of fame, but he was... He, yeah, because oh he God, was the best... president for a while, though. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, he was a dictator for life. Mugabe. The best... Mugabe, Robert Mugabe. But uh, I remember Jacob Zuma's best uh, controversy was when apparently he had like 20 or 30 wives or whatever, because mm. it's allowed, I guess. I don't know. But uh, then at some point there was a controversy because there was a woman from one tribe he had promised to marry, but then he didn't marry. So the father of the bride was like, the president is snubbing us <laughs> by not marrying my daughter. <laughs> like it's so weird oh one time he said yeah you can get like if you take shower after sex you don't get aids he was just like what well, you agree reasoning but this is but and then it's but i mean i like his career and job so first he did the good the social thing yeah he, he was a union worker then he went and made his money and then when he made his money then, like, fine. <laughs> next level yeah <laughs> south africa's former spy boss arthur frazier last week reported to police that robbers allegedly broke into ramaphosa's uh, pala pala farm in the northeast of the country where they found four million dollars in cash hidden in furniture Mm. which is mm-hmm. very low i mean again just i'm so disappointed <laughs> with the level of evil yeah. ramapusa hid the heist from police and the tax authorities fraser said instead fraser alleges alleged sorry ramapusa organized the kidnapping and questioning of the burglars and then bribed them to keep quiet so you know he's dealing with that at the same time uh you had an interesting sort of uh, Middle East meets because I, I that was one of the f- things I found very interesting when I moved to Dubai. I had no idea there would be so many South Africans in Dubai. Then I had no idea there were so many Indians, South Africans of Indian origins. Mm. I don't know if you well, knew that, but anyway. I mean, no, I mean, <laughs> I was like 50, I didn't know anything. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I guess a normal 15 year old, maybe, well, but yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I never even thought about it, you know, before I. I went there and I saw it, but yeah, that is, that is true. So yeah, it should actually an amendment to what I said last time about South Africans in Dubai, because uh, back in the day, even there were a lot of white South Africans, of course, and then there were some South Africans with Indian background. That is true, but no South, no black South Africans. However, now I believe there are more and more black South Africans, but they work, of course, in a totally different sector. So they bring them for the service sector, really, and in. In Dubai, they really categorize. I thought more by bureaucratic nations. positions rather than like mm, offices nah. of companies. Rather, than- no, because those are typically filled with, um, you know, all kinds of English people and British mm. people, oh, and really? then and then Arabs and then white South Africans. Yeah, I would say so. No, I thought they might be like managers, and you know what I mean. Like Dubai is so far. <laughs> anyway, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, they, and they're usually as you. I was gonna say that the Indian. South Africans of Indian background are usually super rich and all that. Like they're quite well off from what I understood. Like the business owners of some. Yeah, kind. some are at least a, a lot are. Yeah, and in yeah. this example, I mean that you're gonna give now. So. Yeah, there is these brothers called Gupta brothers, and they they, they were arrested in. Um, uh, so Rajesh and Atul Gupta were arrested in Dubai in early June and remain in custody. News twenty fours reported directly from Dubai, well, well, that's the advert. (laughs) It is highly unlikely that extradition proceedings will be open to public and the NPA is in a race against time to file further state capture charges. So alleged state state capture kingpins 
Rajesh and Atul Gupta were arrested in Dubai on 2nd of June. Four months after Interpol issued a mm. red notice for them on charges of fraud and money laundering linked to R24.9, R uh, oh, 20 point million. It's a big number. It's, I, I don't know which currency. I'll tell you, it's a South African currency right now. I know, but what is it? And so, um, it, oh, the name? Yeah, tw- yeah, that's that's R. I, R stands for <laughs> twenty <laughs> rupee. No, but, no, no. But I just wanted to find. Um, I think it, I just wanted to see the currency how much it comes up. Never mind, it's hard right now. It's twenty five million of whatever. Oh, that South African is. rand. South African rand. Rand. Yeah. That's okay. Never heard of that. All right. I don't. Uh, yeah. But uh, so yeah, they were arrested, and um, you know. That was in, like, it's quite interesting. Dubai is, you know, one of those places we talked about it with Russia and stuff that is, you know, a hot, hot spot for all the billionaires and millionaires mm-hmm. and all the people basically not wanting to pay taxes or running away. So, um, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. And this was just, a, if I convert it correctly, yeah, this was a money laundering scam involving around the 1.5 million US dollars. Oh, really? That's disappointingly low, but okay. But I mean, this is not like all the money that they have. This is just one investment scam. No, no, I no, no. It's yeah, this, yeah it feels like you know if you're gonna steal money, at <laughs> least aim ten or above. But yeah, well, I mean, guessing this is the one where you know they got caught. They got caught. Not. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Gupta brothers in <laughs> extradition. I'm sorry, in jail, and South Africa is trying to get them out. UAE is saying, nah, it's difficult. They have a lot of money. Yeah. don't want to give them. <laughs> but i feel Not like now. i'm slowly turning into like a majority report producer here or something i'm like filling in the gaps with some, <laughs> with some no. research on the computer <laughs> that's good yeah that's true. And it's, i must say that's actually one of the things why i like youtube shows better because a lot of them people are actually you can see people just like us suddenly suddenly phasing out like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Let me mute. Ah, God damn it. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Canada is, yeah, above US. Okay, yeah, I yes, just went yes, to yes. check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, UK is in Europe. Europe, yeah. Europe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I liked how, yeah, we checked with the South Africa's currency. <laughs> so uneducated. Anyway, so, yeah, that was it. Yeah, no, no, brilliant stuff. Yeah, I had heard about this news that I guess they were they're in Dubai, I guess, doing business and stuff, but I don't know where this investment is. Or they, they live in Dubai, I think, actually. Yeah, I would imagine they probably have residents there just in case. And it didn't come up in your newsletter that you read from <laughs> Dubai. It didn't come up in that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sam, let's continue this journey around the world. Let's now circle <laughs> circle back to india i guess circle back to, to asia and to india yes yeah, through the gupta brothers <laughs> we go to india india announced that that was pretty important and big i'm surprised it hasn't got covered as much but it's going to get more coverage more i promise you in the next few days so major shift in soldier recruitment four year stint under agni path so in india when you usually join the military i don't know how exactly it works but it's a lifelong mm-hmm. thing, right? It's a full life. It's for life. It's a job for life. India's army is not uh, as involved in the economy like the Pakistani army is. Yeah. But it's pretty, like, it's a secure job. And that's partially maybe why Indian army is not very good. Mm-hmm. Because it's a welfare to work program. That's what it is, really. Uh, so, but they are shifting it to a four-year program after which 24%, 25%, sorry, will be absorbed at the end of the four-year based on, and they said it's sort of hiring across case and region. Unveiling Acne Path, a major defense policy reform for recruitment of soldiers, sailors, and airmen into the Indian Army, Indian Navy, and Indian Air Force, the government Tuesday announced that personal recruits under the regime on short-term contractual basis will be called Agni years. Okay. The Shim government said comes into effect immediately and will create a much more youthful and technically adept war fighting force by ensuring a fine balance between youthful and experienced personnel in, uh, in the armed forces. So 
Uh, this is, and this is a huge thing in India. In India, army scene is one of the few sort of uh, paths to, you know, to a secure uh, payment, especially for the, uh, 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 you know, uh, lower classes and all that. And according to reports, it's already led to a protest and, and significantly major protest. So this is from Guardian. Trains and tires burn as Indian protest against loss of army job security. Rallies spread across the states over news of four-year contract to re replace job for life sheet. Young people in India have set trains and tires alight and vandalized buses in angry protest against the new ar army recruitment scheme that calls time on a guaranteed job for life. The protest took place in Rajasthan, Bihar, and Uttar Pradesh after the announcement on Tuesday of the Agni Path. Path of fire. Path of fire. Path of fire. I, I love how military people are basically just all across the world you're just like children who are playing like i'm the i'm the king of good and i'm the master i'm he man okay pass of fire she which aims to recruit people between age uh, aged between 17 and 21 on four-year contracts once the contract ends 25 percent will be recruited so yeah it's leading to protest and as you recall uh, there was the whole uh, like it's really uh, Modi is turning out to be very much like the uh, less successful Margaret Thatcher of India because he keeps trying to push mm -hmm. these neoliberal yeah. reforms, which many have tried to push for many years in India. He's uh, he tried to reform the agriculture sector that didn't turn out well yeah, because of just the protest. Thinking. Yeah, so we'll see if we'll see. Uh, but like yeah, this is a pretty memory. big. This is a pretty big change. I mean, you're right. So, I mean, they're pretty yeah. much only 25% of, of people now in the army will, will will get that contract, you know, for life after four years. The rest. 25% yeah. of the new recruits. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So every year, exactly. So 75% yeah. will let be let go every year. Every, well, after every, every four, four years. years. Yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I was, yeah, then I also came as a shock to young rural people who have become accustomed to the idea of joining the army to achieve job security, a stable income, and social status. So as you can, yeah, and there are some really amazing pictures and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I know even the first picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah, the, some serious pictures. Yeah, and um, yeah, th that especially apparently the violence was bad in states with higher unemployment, naturally. Yeah, so, imagine. you know, that's a big deal. But it also reflects a serious, I think, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with this reform at all. I don't really mm -hmm. understand it too well. But I do think it reflects that our India is now becoming more and more serious about its military, I think. We'll see in the face of China, in the face mm -hmm. of Pakistan, you know, aligning with the U.S. and all that. So I don't know if you have anything else to no, say no, about this. No, nothing else, but you are right. This is a, a, a very big development. I mean, big things happen in India all the time. It doesn't get that much international coverage. but Yeah, yeah. And yeah, for example, that's actually, I was going to just talk a little bit about China, India mm -hmm. relationship. And the, for example, the, I read this report that uh, India Express. China takes over as the big as biggest importer of Indian broken rice. Then there was the report that they lifted the visa ban from India following the COVID. So, oh, really? Uh, and it's a big thing for Indian professionals. I don't know if you know this, up to two years ago at least, Chinese companies were the biggest investors in the start so in India. At the yeah, same time, yeah, India yeah, has yeah. that alliance with the uh, U.S., so, uh, you know, it, the, the whole thing is uh, the relationship between India and China is becoming more and more schizophrenic. We'll see if it leads, it leads to a breakage that happened mm -hmm. with Russia or Europe, or I don't know, they come to a better understanding. We'll see. I have no idea. Do you have any idea? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, tell me. Don't keep me in the dark. Come on. What's going to happen? Tell me. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
So talking of China, I also wanted to talk about the, uh, yeah, I thought it's a good segue to Chinese Russian um, uh, situation. Today, just today, uh, Xi Jinping, I believe, reannounced their, their support for the security concerns that Russia had and the actions they had to take um, uh, to secure themselves. You also had this report from Times, Times Now News. Russia's Duma speaker alludes to a new G8, which includes mm. India, Iran, and China, as war with Ukraine continues. So I think we are seeing the earliest steps in the creation of a sort of a parallel, or at least a somewhat, somewhat, uh, you know, somewhat secure sort of financial system for these countries within them. I mean, I they're know. trying to. They've set up so many things. I mean, they have. Things similar to the World Bank, they have other alliances similar. So, I mean, yeah, this is something they've been trying to do, set up these parallel organizations while also staying involved as much as they can in all the other organizations. I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, uh, I mean, I just, I hope it, I mean, the thing is, it because of America's hold on the bank, global banking mm-hmm. system and the hold they have on uh, currency because yeah. they are, yeah, it seems so hard, but it seems now that's the thing. That's I think the guy actually makes a good point. I'm not sure if the he's actually a good politician or anything, but listen to this. As the Ukraine-Russia war continues, the State Duma speaker via Cheslov uh, Volodin on Saturday opined that the nations who had so far refused to participate in the sanctions war were being pushed into forming a new big eight group with Moscow. I think that's a very good way of putting it, being pushed to, you know, rather than even wanting to. So in the new grouping, he included India, China, Brazil, and Iran, which does seem like, do you remember back in the days there was, when I was at university, there was all the talk about the BRIC countries. Do you remember that? That's BRIC exactly country. what I was trying to refer to early on. Sorry, I put my computer on mute because the fan is um, pretty loud on it. That's uh, exactly what I was kind of referring to about to these kind of things right yeah that was brazil russia no but brick was yeah, it's very much Africa, with the brick was that's the thing brick was when they thought russia brazil all these people yeah. are going to come together brick was with the blessing of the global order mm. but you know recently with the shanghai cooperation group and all these new things i think we are seeing a yes, more you're right. independent you thing there yeah, you're right. This... That had the blessing back then, right? Because that's when Brazil was also yeah. considered as this like really emerging, developing oh, country, the, which is Brick, about to... Brick. I mean, even that was one of the like first things that I was like, are people being serious? Because the, the giveaways for me, it was all the marketing thing. Mm. It included South Africa just because they wanted to include Africa. Mm-hmm. And that was so ridiculous because South Africa's economy was so much shattered and all of them half That's of true. the army was like hiv positive at the time it was like and then they put it up there with like brazil and india i mean it was like they, it was such a marketing thing of nine anyway then i read this this was interesting fanfare and fireworks to open russia china border bridge mm-hmm. russia and china have opened a new cross-border bridge why which constructors say will cut travel distance of chinese goods to western russia by 1,500 kilometers. So yeah, there is genuine, like even infrastructure yeah, yeah. work seems that seems to be done, which is a big thing if you live in Asia, the lack of infrastructure is a big deal that like it makes it as, like the cost of sending something to Moscow could end up being the same, same cost as sending it to LA because mm-hmm. of lack of good yeah, infrastructure, yeah, yeah. you know? No, 100%, I know what you mean. So yeah, the... The global east seems to be getting it together <laughs> or at least trying to they usually yeah. try and fail so we'll see you know then last thing i wanted to point it out i wanted to i i just was doing research for the thing and i wanted to see uh, you know there was some stuff about china's activities in zambia and you know apparently they're they may be building another uh, military thing and all that and it was fascinating though I will send you the screenshots. I took some screenshots from the Google search, man. Uh, it's just the reporting on China is so biased from everywhere. All the, like you got, I don't know, let's say Times of India. No, not Times. Well, all the Western ones 
are so neg- China's meddling, China's increasing <laughs> influence, China or oh, China's security influence, and all this stuff from Africa or Iran or China was just like Chinese built and their hospital yeah. oh china a chinese person helps the grandmother cross the street and then it's just the both sides yeah. are just so and you're like what is going what is china doing i don't get it and of are course they're not doing this for doing... fun or something but i mean exactly. you know it's just they're doing both. When, yeah. but yeah but i mean their approach is just you know you can it's just you can condemn it a bit less than other approaches that are used right and then when it's framed oh, in those sure. ways it's just it's just put too much, you know? Yeah, it's just neither side is gaking yet. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I would agree that the Chi- uh, like the poro Chinese people, their articles seem to be more balanced. The other side is just like, yeah, uh, China, China. And they, yeah, as you say, they do, they are doing it in a more, I guess, economic w- way, which is seems more pleasant at first, at least. That's how America started the Marshall Plan. So. No, that is very true. And, and I mean, you know, they do some stuff that are hospitals and things, and some are obviously, um, it's more obvious that, you know, it's for increasing trade and all that, right, when they suggest to build ports and all those kind of things. So, All right, now, going off of China <laughs> to Central Asia, I guess. I don't know how we are doing this track. I think we're doing like post-COVID style logistics now, you know, before COVID yeah. logistics <laughs> and China working that's like in the poster. <laughs> true, true. So there was a, uh, again, I think uh, there was a flare up in uh, Central Asia again. Tajik soldier killed in Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan border shootout. So the two countries trade brain for the latest flare up at the contested frontier that left the to- Tajik soldier dead. So, I mean, uh, this is according to local and, by the way, Russian uh, reports because they are the only ones who report <laughs> <Yeah>. from there. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> uh, this, uh, this was, um, sorry, near, this happened in a near border to uh, uh, Russia, apparently. Uh, Tajik, uh, Tajiks claim that Kyrgyzstan soldiers open fired without any reason. Mm. So uh, one person died and three people were injured. So, uh, you know, but Kyrgyzstan denies the allegation and they are saying that, uh, you know, uh, sorry, I'm just reading some stuff. Here. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm also looking at the They haven't said anything as specific. Mm. But uh, yeah, tensions between these countries are flaring up. And, you know, there's the part of, uh, there is a part of Tajikistan, which is sort of Badakhshan, which is sort of trying to get independence. And there is recently fl- flare up of conflicts there. I don't mm, think I uh, those are connected to this. But yeah, Tajikistan itself. But I do think as these countries are increasingly becoming part of the global economy and becoming more and more important as they play a role between China and Russia, I have a feeling that these things are going to, you know, increase basically, you know, because these countries right now are just fiefdoms, Mm -hmm. like like feudal fiefdoms. But, you know, we're going to see real power emerge, I think. But the independence movement in Badakhshan of Tajikistan was quite shocking to me. I don't know if you found that normal. Or... I mean, I, my level of knowledge is so low there that I can't. <laughs> I have no idea about the region, so I don't know. Yeah, so apparently there, there, there has been hostage takings mm-hmm. and you know clashes between the central forces and the people there. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You have anything? No. No, 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 no. I have nothing. All right. Oh, I also wanted to add that recently the relationship between Tajikistan and Iran is becoming better. After nine years, during Rouhani years, Tajikistan relations with Iran was not that good. But uh, Mr. Rahman, or I think he's wasn't he Rahmanov? I don't know if he's changed <laughs> because a lot of these people after the Soviet Union fell, you know, on all that. They changed their name back to Islamic stuff. But anyway, President Rahmanov, the president, or Rahman, 
president of Tajikistan traveled to Tehran and met with the president. And this is really a big improvement in the relations because back in like about four or five years ago, uh, Iranian officials met with Islamist, uh, with the head of the Islamist parties in Tajikistan. Okay, and okay. the president of Tajikistan views them as a, as like not terrorist groups, but not really, you know. Yeah. Tajikistan is quite secular. Was, Tajikistan is doing Ataturk style secularism. If they see a religious person, they sort of attack it. Or really? It's, yeah, yeah, man. I, I don't know if it was Tajik, was it Tajikistan or Turkmenistan? They banned beards for a while. Really? They were like, you're, if you were mm. young, uh, I remember one of my friends used to go to university in one of those places, and he said that only foreigners were allowed to have beards. <laughs> This obsession was, with beards. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't get it. No one is going to solve it. I don't problem. know. If, maybe it was another uh, stun. Maybe it yeah, wasn't. No, I don't. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Humanity really. <laughs> Humanity really needs to chill out. <laughs> it's, it's, to be honest, these are, this is culture wall, you know? Yeah. Like religion is culture wall. That's the greatest trick of religion. It's like you talk about clothing and yeah. oh, the hair should be out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that, no, that's but, a very but, good point. I like that. That's a very fun way to look at it. That is very cultural. true. I mean, the, and, the stuff as, that they're obsessed with a lot of the time exactly are things that we label as culture wars in, in other contexts, kind of. Yeah, as long as you're talking about like if you should have a beard or if your hair should be out. You know, who gives a shit who's <laughs> stealing the oil money? Yeah. You're talking real issues about <laughs> <the hair>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that uh, jesus man this beard then, thing is so funny yeah everyone has then, a position on it yes, yes. <laughs> uh it's so weird I, I find that so weird anyway but then i thought uh, we looked at the whole world this week <laughs> almost like we looked at oh but one area one area which everybody cares about was left out and that was europe <laughs> our good friends in europe so I thought uh, starting with UK, UK is uh, still the same. <laughs> Nothing really crazy happened. People are still about party. A lot of left are like saying, I don't understand it, but they're saying, oh, Boris Johnson is going to, oh, he's about to, you know, lose uh, everything. About to yeah, I, I don't get it <laughs> still. I don't. I mean, look, I'm sure he's not as stable as he's like. As he was you know. before the scandal. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah exactly. And oh, Bo- oh, Keir Starmer, apparently. Uh, this came out about Keir Starmer that they did a like they do these cloud things that you know which which terms online are most associated okay. with you. Have you seen yeah, those? Yeah, yeah, no. And the big the bigger yeah. the association, the bigger the name. Guess what was the word most associated with uh, uh, Keir Starmer? Boring. Oh, uh... <laughs> not even bad. Boring. <laughs> and then apparently Jesus, there was. A, there was a labor shadow cabinet meeting and he said, guys, it's not really cool. It's not boring wanting to get back to government. It's not cool. You're <laughs> briefing me into the press against me. It's not cool. Okay. I'm not boring. I'm a cool guy. <laughs> All right. I, we, I, I, you know, I have a glass of wine sometimes, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I go really crazy. I have two glasses of wine, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just such a loser. So that's, a substantive thing in Britain. I, I'm, yeah, there was also this whole. Uh, there is a whole refugee problem. Yeah. UK is having that they are trying to send some refugees uh, from Ukraine and other countries to Rwanda, but it's so funny. The flights keep getting canceled because yeah. like somebody does illegal. <laughs> like today, two hours before the flight, apparently it was canceled yeah. again for the like but i mean time. so there's What's actually a plan for this like where, where are they putting these people in like rwanda like like what they're putting them in they're camps them. or they're putting them in the city like what does that mean like <laughs> what does that mean what are you doing yeah man i don't i don't understand it to be honest either very well uh and how many times are you going to do this i mean they they, <laughs> they oh okay Apparently, according to a deal they have with Rwanda, uh, uh, anybody who comes through the Manche, Manche, Manche Canal, mm-hmm. they so are friends. Yeah, they send them back to Rwanda, and they can request. Wow. Uh, 
I don't yeah. understand because of the way it's written in Persian. Sorry, I'm reading, writing, reading this in Persian. I don't understand if they can request. It says from that country. Yeah. I don't understand. That country means Rwanda or UK. I'm guessing it means Rwanda. So, so they're probably yeah, promising these poor people that they go, no, they're, listen, there's a way of doing things. There's a form and structure. Go there, apply, and come. Yeah. And and they are Britain is paying 150 million dollar to Rwanda. So. It's not good. But I must say, at the same time, at the same time, there is one guy, there is one guy among these refugees. And BBC Persia is focused on this guy <laughs> so much. And this motherfucker doesn't make sense, to be honest. He, he's on this flight that's supposed to go, and we are, BBC Persia is killing us with, you know, he got his ticket now. They got <laughs> First of all, Rwanda is not that place. If you are a if you're a political refugee, which he claims, so he's running away from the state, mm-hmm. right? It's not like you, okay, I don't know what's this. If you go with this flight to Rwanda, maybe they give you a house or something and get a job. It's not like you're going because of economic yeah. reasons. You need to get to Europe. So, you know, that's one thing. Secondly, he keeps talking shit so much. He's bold. Oh, I am a blah, blah, blah. He's one of these, uh, he was one of the, he's a police officer in Iran who, uh, that's the thing, by the way. You, I don't. I, okay, I don't understand the whole thing. He, he, he was a police officer in Iran. Then there was this bullshit European court. They do this court in absentia for Iranian government. You know, like, oh, you're a war crime. You're, you are. We, we find you guilty. And Iranian yeah. government goes, who are you? Like, mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, but <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, you know. So. Uh, that happened and uh, you know like european ball they do that about america as well every once in a while the crimes of the empire just bunch of fucking bullshit academic and <laughs> losers and journals and all that and he came to that bullshit thingy and testified against the iranian government right i see so now he's in a and he and he's, he's like oh if i go to rwanda this this sepa will kill me Fuck you, motherfucker. Do you think Sepa is like, what do you think they're, they're, they're after there because you went on TV? And I love the fact that BBC is like, we are not discussing his name or not showing his pictures because of security reasons. You told us he's a police officer. You told us he testified in a court like two months ago where like six police, like, well, like how no, hard do you think it is to figure out for, for Iran? Is, oh, I mean, fuck. Like, I don't, if all the refugees are like him, I am losing a bit of, I hope they are not like him. I hope he's a, just Iranian refugees, man. Always, always. With the Syrian thing, some of these losers also, like when there was a civil war, they were like, oh, we are, we have to go to, and then they are the most annoying refugees. They are always so pushy and they, oh, the quality of, you know, typical Iranian and stuff. Like, it's too hot. Oh, now it's too cold. Oh, now it's too... Ah, oh, goddamn. Sorry, but yeah, this motherfucker, he's been on my nerve for a week now. Yeah, I don't really think about him, but you made, I think, the first point that, you know, I mean, of course, you don't, okay, you went to the UK, you would probably rather stay in the UK, but if you're a political, yeah, refugee and you go to Rwanda, I mean, it's yeah, not the worst re- thing because your biggest concern is to be away from Iran and the Iranian government, right? And I mean, I, I don't it. think they yeah. make their way to Rwanda. <laughs> They do no. Iran is hugely active in Africa, apparently. Really? But yeah, yeah, yeah. In especially Nigeria because they have a Shia population. Uh-huh. But they are not. Again, I'm not. Del- again, it's like me thinking, oh man, because of the things I say yeah. here, I'm sure Islamic Republic is gonna. Yeah, no. But my point is, after- maybe if you're in Syria or something, they might like you know catch you and bring you back or something yeah, like you know if he was in Iran, if yeah, in Iran, Iran, for, Iran sure, yeah, in Iran, they, sure. Yeah. But maybe neighboring countries but, or something, but. Would they go and get someone oh, from ta- Rwanda there? There will be like more issues no, man, internationally they, and all this. I mean, I don't know. You, they go after usually because they have much more limited resources <laughs> than US and all that. They go after people that are big. They don't go yeah. after any, you know, that too, you know rebel. I know. They, and actually, yeah, that's like the guy who uh, they got, who was, they stole from Iraq. Uh, he was a big deal. He's, he had like the biggest telegram thingy or whatever. You know, and he was connected to a guy who mm. was part of the, that's a big deal to them, that one of their own children, for example, mm. goes rogue, they make sure that that's, you know, uh, dealt with. But some fucking police officer went to some bullshit, like, 
crimes of uh, minority, like uh, yeah. like worse than UN. At mm-hmm. least UN in you know like the Hague or whatever. They actually in like some bullshit written document they technically are authority this is just like bunch of oh we're gonna get together and role play as judges and you know witnesses <laughs> yeah anyway sorry yeah. so yeah but then but i'm not I, not to undermine the whole you know i know majority of refugees aren't like you know uh that him you know i don't know his whole life story maybe i just know glimpses so you know i don't know uh so uh, on other news then i thought uh, you know i should focus you know on a scandinavia and that type and it's surprising well. quite <laughs> yeah there was the whole thing about sweden you know uh, uh trying to meet the demands of Turkey and all that but what i found kind of uh, uh interesting was sorry i'm just looking to find the thing where is that I can't find the, sorry, I can't open up one of the articles or oh, found. So this was quite interesting. And Denmark <laughs> and decades long dispute over barren rock in Arctic. <laughs> Hans Island whiskey wars described by some as a pseudo confrontation ends after formal Hello. division agreed. I mean, I just, I really at this point you do wish you were Canadian like you or Danish just that's the conflict you're involved in like yeah there's a barren rock in the middle of the sea <laughs> how many people like none injured none <laughs> it has been described by some as a pseudo confrontation which is sounds like you couldn't just call it bullshit why do you go for such a like pseudo <laughs> anyway and by others as a diplomatic afterthought <laughs> Now, however, the so-called whiskey war, which was never really a conflict at all, has finally been resolved with the formal division of a tiny barren Arctic island between Canada and Denmark. Well, what does it I have? Feel... What does this have? Like this? What's I have this? no. Uh, we we're gonna find out together. I but I love <laughs> the fact. That, I love the fact that there, there's a lot of throwing in the Guardian article. <laughs> barren rock. Some call it conflict some call yeah. it not conflict because there was no conflict <laughs> yeah sitting in the kennedy channel of nares strait between the northwestern coast of semi-autonomous danish territory of green island and canada's ellis Mare island the, un- the uninhibited half mile is square <laughs> half mile is you yeah. see they're throwing shapes <laughs> uninhibited half mile is square hans island has no mineral resources nor much else of interest unless you are visiting a seabird (laughs) (laughs) they are not happy shaped like a muffin and surrounded by cliffs it was for centuries an inuit hunting ground crucially however it has been a center of long running border disputes between disputes sorry between canada and denmark via greenland's home rule government with copenhagen claiming that geological evidence points to Hans <laughs> Island being part of Greenland, a claim rejected by Ottawa. You, I don't geological evidence points <laughs> to Hans Island. So if they like, I don't understand if the geological like uh, evidence, there's a connection. Be- I don't get it. Like how are they? And then there's a photographic of like geographical yeah. thing. So Canada and Denmark agreed in 1973 to create a border through Nares straight halfway between Green Island and Canada, but they were unable to agree which country would have sovereignty over Hans, which lies about 680 miles south of the North Pole. In the end, they decided to work out the question of the ownership later. Uh, that prompted a largely good nature advocacy between two parties, including adverts posted on Google promoting their claims and fla- flag raising stunt. So it's a joke to them themselves as I well. I know, like, man. Like, you know, oh, it, Jesus it, it, Christ. Yeah. Well, like, look at this a few things. The whiskey war reference came yeah, about after, that, Den- go ahead. <laughs> after lovely, Denmark's lovely. Minister of Greenland Affairs raised the Danish flag on the island in 1984, buried a ball of Danish uh, schnapps at the base of the flagpole and left it out saying, welcome to the Canadian, uh, to the Danish island, sorry. And then after that, Canadians planted their own flag and left a bottle of Canadian whiskey. Since then, the countries have in turn 
hoisted their flags and left balls of various spirits in tit for tat moves. And if you thought this wasn't ridiculous enough, check this out. Uh, where's the Google ads part? Oh my God, I was yeah, just above, looking at above. it. The, which the, the, pro, the ad. No, the you, you said, oh yeah, at the height of the rivalry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Both sides took to buying ads on Google to make their claim after Denmark said it would send a letter of protest over a visit to, to over a visit in 2005 by Canada's then defense minister Bill Graham. You didn't oh, read that yeah. part, right? You read they, they no, mentioned Google twice yeah, before that. No, no. Yeah. yeah, that's they send the defense minister that really escalated <laughs> the conflict from a bunch of and Denmark was like, oh, but, but, but I love I'm this so, Google ads. This, <laughs> like, yeah, why, I, I, who are you trying? Why why Google ads like? <laughs> Are the are the Danish gonna be convinced? They're like, oh, I just saw this very good. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is a this is a real war cameo. You have to win both the land yeah. and the hearts and minds. Okay, of your this opponents, for, <laughs> of your opponent. Yeah, but this is so. I'm sorry, but this is what happens to your nation when you don't have real conflicts, or when you have America protecting you and you living off the surplus of an empire you had hundred years ago. Like, um, this is like really bad for character. I'm sorry, you have to get into a real conflict. <laughs> like, this, you're leaving. I, I, I wish I lived nearby, by the way. You could have gotten like free whiskey bottles every <laughs> and then, now and then. Like, just, you know, these yeah, idiots go. coming, leaving whiskey. What's oh, this I'll case? Show them. Okay, brilliant. Aged whiskey. No. I love it. <laughs> From the foreign secretary. Like, <laughs> like, what kind of a war is this? You're going, leaving. We are, oh, I'll show them. <laughs> I'll leave a bottle of whiskey. Ah! <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then I was like, okay, okay, this, this is, you know, bad. This is bad. But it can't get any worse than this, right? It can't, the news can't get any more mm. ridiculous than that, right? And then I continued my research. And do you recall we talked about that Swedish news about the fact that apparently People don't feed their guests when yeah, they come yeah. over. I yeah. was thinking last time before that, I should have made a disclaimer that I've never been to Scandinavian countries. So everything I said Me that too. time, yeah, that's based off stereotypes. I went to go write that in the comments, actually. I forgot to. What are two people who didn't say anything bad about what we said? No, no. <laughs> we had Apparently, we had Swedish comments. Two Swedish yeah. people commented. And they seem to be, as always, Scandinavians usually are very good natured. Yeah. Whenever I just remember why I didn't respond to them. I remember I was waiting for something to say. Anyway, I'll go back and check. Yeah, well, well, this the story has evolved, <laughs> and we would like to issue a retraction <laughs> and an apology. Oh, really? For our, listen to this. This is yeah. This is from Foreign Policy. Sweden Gate was a lesson in how easily oh misinformation my God. spreads. Again, misinformation came here every time. <laughs> we are Johnny Depp, Amber Heard. We got <laughs> fucked by misinformation. You know the Syrian war and Ukraine war gray zone. We got you know gray zone misinformation and Jimmy Dore fucked. Like every time, we are just fucked by misinformation. <laughs> One person's anecdote became a false lesson in national character by Elizabeth Bra, a columnist of, at foreign policy and a fellow at American Enterprise Institute. So really, Elizabeth Bra, you're doing well with your you know, job and time. You're spending it on the right things. There are a lot of Sweden haters out there. Oh, geez, come there? on, calm down. Are there? I, I thought everybody mm. loved, like, every, I, anyway. Or rather, a lot of people with time on their hands and possibly a bit of help from people and groups wishing to harm Sweden. Har harm Sweden? It was just the room. Anyway, within just a couple of days, a bizarre Reddit post about Swedes not feeding their guests dinner became an internet phenomenon, even though there is no research backing it up. Research? Res what are you talking mm. about, lady? It was just like an anecdotal like it was a cliche bait. Yeah. Chill the fuck out. Like it's like saying you know Iranians uh, can't stop drinking tea even after they're dead. Like there's no research <laughs> behind that, but we all know it's true. <laughs> you know, <It's, laughs> even though there other countries can learn lessons from the mysterious Sweden Gate and how easily misinformation can spread, even when there is no malign actor behind it. Just simple gullibility. Quote: What is the weirdest thing you had? to do at someone else's house because of their culture slash religion, a screen Reddit poster asked in May. Guys, please add your own uh, scary music mm -hmm. over my reading of this article. And a user responded that, 
I remember going to my Swedish friend's house and while we were playing in this room, his mom yelled at that dinner was ready. And check this, he told me to wait in his room while they ate. This shit was fucking wild. So this was the research lady behind that, you know, room. And and the, the but the, there's, no, there's no claim that that experience wasn't, like this, maybe the experience was correct. Like nobody knows that, that person. Read. Yeah, yeah. How, that, how that do you know? I mean, he was just probably... talking about his experience. He didn't say that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he did, but he didn't say that this was widely reflected everywhere. I don't know what. And others took it. No, no, no. Go to the Come next. Here. Yeah. He he clearly implies every Swedish person <laughs> is. I mean, he told about Canadian. his experience. We don't know. That could have been absolutely true. So. In no time, the comment was going viral on Reddit, then on Twitter, then on Instagram. Oh. Oh. People began writing with comments about how weird and inhospitable suites are. On one Instagram post, post added a map that illustrated how stingy Northern Europe are with Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, and parts of Northern Germany <laughs> marked a frightening dark red. Frightening dark red. This is where identity for black we... people, <laughs> Latinos, Middle Eastern, whatever you are, this is what happens in the end. Mm-hmm. Identity politics gets us where Norwegians and <laughs> Danish are like, oh, oh, oh you're, you're, you're maligning the Northern Europeans by putting a frightening red color on our map. Jesus Christ. I mean, I must say though, salute to this lady. I mean, <laughs> like seriously, you got this many words out of shitty article got published in foreign policy. Well done to you. Whatever drift you're doing is worthy. Sweden Gate quickly became a topic and migrated to traditional media with oh. newspapers, with newspapers eagerly reporting on this previously known on aspect of Swedish culture. A Swedish shawl sit at the dinner table while his friend and the friend's parents di- dine on meatballs, mashed potatoes, and lingonberry sauce. <laughs> Come on, that's so, not all so they therefore, eat. That's not all they eat in Sweden. So the wait, therefore, when, they, it's a okay, fine, quote. Yeah. I have to. Yeah, delicious aroma wafts below the child's nose, but there is no plate for it. <laughs> it's like written no, as but, if it's yeah, Oliver But Twist. read, read the next word. The New York Times reported. Uh huh. So. If yeah. we're even going to take that misinformation who's being spread. It's New York Times. Yeah. I didn't see it on Reddit. <laughs> I haven't been on yeah, Reddit yeah, for like two it. years. I saw it on not Twitter, Fox. not on Instagram. I saw it in New York Times and well, now Foreign read, Policy. Let, yeah, let me read this beautiful sentence from New York Times again. A Swedish child sit at the dinner table while his friend and the friend's parents dine on meatballs. <laughs> mashed potatoes and lingerberry sauce. The delicious aroma waft, wafts below the child's nose, but there is no plate for him. There's no plate, there's no spoon. So, but is that no not cutlery. true though? But was and this not true? Child, I don't get it. <laughs> and then the child is forced to see them order haagen from the local you know, supermarket. As they eat the haagen <laughs> the child goes, please, sir, please, can I have a meatball? And they go, no, that's for the dogs. <laughs> but, I, but I mean, you know, like, I mean, ahead, I mean, like, if you're going to be like really, really fair, right? Like the lady didn't technically debunk any of these stories. Like this reporting could be true, right? It's the generalization, if anything, is Yeah, she's true. saying that, no, she's saying, yeah, she's saying this. That how first of all she thinks that everybody who read that thought that it's genuinely like yeah. every Swedish person if they have a guest sorry it's against our culture can't feed you <laughs> fuck up go to Norway I don't care <laughs> go to Norway with their, all their fancy fancy Western <laughs> culture feeding their guests <laughs> so you know uh, I, I I don't think anybody thought it's just yeah it's like a, somebody I think in the comments put that it's probably they don't I think that was the original thing they don't do dinner parties mm-hmm. that often like it's just like you know they yeah. I think they have that fika thing have you heard about that they usually have coffee and cake in oh. the afternoon okay, or yeah. late afternoon fika or they have fika a lot of like they have <laughs> coffee they love coffee from what I understand in Sweden and shit it's a big uh, sort of like uh, and then maybe they drink at night i don't know but i never thought it's like you know i thought maybe back in the days it was like a thing that older people didn't like maybe i don't know but it yeah. wasn't like i was thinking sweets being disparaged mm-hmm. anyway it was uh, okay it's a weird culture 
Yeah, no, I thought said, exactly like they don't insist on the food and, you know, perhaps yeah, even yeah, in some saying. places they're like, oh, like, no, like family dinner, even if you have your friend here, like, I don't know, we just have it between time us. For family, then, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But this lady, I, I mean, she proved far she, really what she culture. proved is that the New York Times, <laughs> if someone spreads misinformation, yeah, New York Times <laughs> New York Times. <laughs> that's my I mean, takeaway. New York Times, uh, yeah, New York Times, to be fair, the way New York Times put it, it's like a fucking, it's as if the child was kidnapped or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this setting, while this is from New York Times still, this setting, while quite normal in Sweden and other Nordic countries, has horrified people around the world. Shocked to learn that some Swedish families do not invite their children's visiting friends to eat with them at mealtime. Again, horrified. <laughs> do you know the understanding of who was going, <gasps> oh, no! dropping yeah. like their mobile phone? I was sh- yeah, gla- like Kaiser Sosa <laughs> at the end of the usual suspect, glasses falling off of people. <gasps> I was one of was really like i was like it's such a good idea it's, yeah some people like i didn't i mean i was like that would suck if you're in the room but jesus christ yeah the case provided opportunities for albert contributions too in as if like albert contributors were waiting for that <laughs> as if not just like elizabeth what was it elizabeth bra all op-ed writers are not just basically mm-hmm. like they would write as we can see, they would write about anything or like, anyway, she talks about the, uh, uh, somebody, uh, you know, oh, this is so great. Listen to this. In Britain's The Independent, uh, a, a sweet named Linda Johansson, who is neither a reporter nor a sociologist, but runs an Etsy shop, waited in to say, I'm Swedish. It's true that we don't serve food to guests. What's the problem? She presented no data documenting this <laughs> alleged habit. <laughs> no, come here. No, we, we are not allowed to talk about Iran anymore without data. Yeah. Like, you know, what was your primary research? What <laughs> institute funded your comment on yep. like independence? In like, Iran, they eat a lot of kebab. Where's your data? Holy shit. Data. So you have to get like meat consumption <laughs> at like, the pound? Unfortunately, go in the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay, (laughs) looking for raw data. (laughs) Independent called me for a comment. If I could please uh, request some of the confidential data on meat usage in Iran, (laughs) if that is possible. (laughs) Broken down by region. (laughs) Yeah, please. (laughs) Unfortunately, the New York Times forgot to investigate whether the social media posters allegations were in fact true instead relying on unconfirmed information such as such as a tweet by a pop star zara larson the pieces reporter is a general assignment reporter based in new york city and has no sweden expertise who, who has sweden expertise who are these experts going Swedish expert ask me Ask me, I tell, what are you talking? What is wrong with you? You're like, this is not brains. I come, oh my God. Oh my God. I love this lady. I'm going to follow her and read like everything she's written before and after this, just forever. I mean, can you imagine writing this um, uh, by a pop, by a tweet pop star? And then in parentheses, the pieces reporter is a general assignment reporter. Yeah, I mean, this sounds like a general assignment kind of story. There are, in fact, no studies that show that Swedes fail to feed guest dinners there more are no frequently studies. than. Although oh. lots of social media posters claim to have experienced being left out of dinners, countless Swedes were baffled at allegations, as ought to be well known by now. Just because an allegation exists on social media doesn't mean it has to be true. Justice for Johnny, buddy. Justice for Johnny. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, okay, so I guess it really based on like, you know, if all these people also saying that like, why would they say that? It's nothing crazy. It seems like, yeah, oh, yeah, in Sweden, there's a there's a chance they don't do it too much. Now, I think we are getting to the real up- okay. why, why she's getting upset. Like other Swedes. <laughs> oh. Okay. I have never not been fed when visiting a friend or acquaintance. And without scientific documentation of the practice, concluding from various social media allegations that a failure to feed guests is a national habit is as credible as saying 
uh, arguing that former U.S. President Donald Trump won the 2020 election because somebody said on so on YouTube, she's one of these fucking January 6 freak type misinformation freaks. She's trying to connect anything. I mean, can you believe it? Like these people, they got a ban. Again, I'm for free speech. Really, I genuinely mean that. I'm not for free speech because I believe, oh, through free speech and investigative reporting, we're going to cover. Yeah. Uh, because they, because I believe in fun. That's just one fun we have as like non, non-powerful people. We can laugh and shit like, and they got to take that away from us, these motherfuckers. Oh my God. Man, Many Swedes tried to take the baffling campaign on the chin. I uh, quote, I enjoyed the thread in uh, blah, blah, it's some R ask, it's some thread. I can't read thread names. I enjoyed the thread in where Greeks and Bulgarians and Turks put their genocidal dreams aside to conclude that Swedes are damn weird. Jesus Christ. Man, she's that making forced? such a big thing out of it. I mean, you know. This is a quote from somebody else. This is a quote for many. This is one of those suites that took it up. This is taking it on the chin that somebody jokes about your feeding habit. Yeah. And you mentioned the fact that they're genocidal. Exactly. I mean, I mean, like a normal person would post- react with it this way. A normal person would be like, listen, people are saying this as a suite. This has really not been my experience. And I can also tell you 10 Quite other people who, 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 you know, um, who I don't mean, do hope- this. That's how a normal person reacts. No scientific evidence. This, that. I hope this lady never goes to a comedy show in the UK because it's Scottish, <laughs> Irish, English, Liverpool, Scouse, uh, you know, uh, uh, people from Newcastle. Everybody's really uh, Birmingham, you know, uh, uh, Southerners, yeah. uh, posh boys, non posh boys. Everybody's yeah. made fun of. And there is no scientific research being, you know, uh, you know, Eddie's or scientific yeah. research about how Germans are, you know, funny. And listen, you have the full article. I'm only able to read half of it. Does she I provide? Think- yeah, no, it only opens half. And I don't know, I rarely ever read um, from the time. Okay. So I don't know why. But does she provide scientific evidence that? The reverse is true that when you go at this, no, uh, no, this she, is... she's pointing out the lack of scientific evidence. Oh, but so she doesn't have scientific evidence on the other hand side, though. Do you get what mm-hmm. I mean? She doesn't have scientific evidence proving that when you go, oh, to yeah, yeah. No, house, no, no, they no. actually give you food if you're a friend but, and all but, this for all age groups, for all sexes, across all socioeconomic classes fair, across the city. To be fair, the one who makes the claim has to prove. That's the Fair thing. You, that's what I use against religious people because <laughs> the religious people do the same thing. You don't have evidence yeah. for God doesn't exist. And I'm like, you made the car. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, she he brought does. it up. But she Same brought anything. it up. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, man, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Uh, like she, uh, she talks about, yeah, t- taking it on the chin is mentioning that Greek, Bulgarians yeah, exactly. and Turks are all genocidal. Uh uh, and then it, some of it is bullshit, bullshit. But then you wouldn't believe how far she goes. <laughs> then the odd food post took a darker turn as social media accounts seemingly belonging to real people began complaining that Swedes don't just fail to feed their guests, but are racist too. Because again, nobody knows about that. Oh, racism in Northern Europe. <gasps> what a surprise. You only know? other places. There's racism only in other racism places. Racism only in America. Yeah. Really, it's just America. Everybody else in the world is just, all the Europeans come here, as you know, are very educated, multicultural people. And as any, by the way, one of the best books, like, I, I don't know one of the books written in Sweden, but one of the more famous one was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo mm-hmm. and all that, and all of that about like these like s- layer on th- this uh, the underneath of the Swedish culture and you know it has its problems just yeah. like any other yeah, Iranians, uh, there's a lot of Iranian racists um, as uh, racist too that was when some analysts started to worry who uh, why wait 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 Sweden had after all just begun the process of joining NATO frustrating a country with a history of turning domestic tension to information warfare uh, fodder or of inventing entirely quote quote a seemingly innocuous thread on reddit rapidly going viral and turning into a campaign of hatred and threats with sweets being called racist summarized antoine Liff, 
a Swedish communication consultant who, who specializes in disinformation and misinformation. I'm guessing he's at the same level as uh, Paul Mason in terms of expertise. <laughs> this quote, this can be a part of the general public discourse and it can be entertaining to some, but a hostile group or country can also take advantage of a viral phenomenon. And this type of media phenomenon can benefit different actors. Sweden's new psychological defense agency examined the case and determined the campaign had not been instigated by a hostile state. So even the Swedish <laughs> goddamn psychological defense agency, which I had no idea you can have this defense agency, but well done for having it. The agency has responsibility for country for foreign malign influencing influence campaign. So she tried to connect it to this. The Swedish psychological defense agency said, "Lady, chill the fuck out. It's just a joke." <laughs> and then Sweden Gate is is the is only the latest example of defamation campaign targeting Sweden. The Reddit post may have begun as an innocuous fun, but it was quickly taken over by people who had no compunction about the spreading rumors and inflating them by adding new unverified information and outright falsehood. A strategist in Moscow, Beijing and beyond could sit back and let social media users' stupidity and laziness do their work for them. So she's she. This is really weird. She's not even saying that they were behind it. Yeah. She's saying you by your because you're a stupid and because you like to laugh or because yeah. you believe that or whatever. You're doing their work for them. You're all useful idiots. We are all sorry. We are all yeah. useful idiots. Sorry, sorry. Led by the New York Times. I, I don't know why she keeps on going back to New this York Times is thing. The king. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. And what? And again, that person could have been saying the truth. I mean, that person, that, that person never said that. You know, it's uh, yeah. You know, everybody in Sweden doesn't do this. They spoke about their own personal experience, right? In that, in Reddit, on that first paragraph. Yeah, I mean, so, I'm sure at some point, as it's with everything online, you get a thread. People just going saying racist stuff mm, about Swedish people, or saying really bad stuff about Sweden. But that has nothing to do with anyway. Yeah. As I highlighted in a recent piece, she's again one of those like Taylor Lawrence type that, you know, uh, what was in Nina Janquist type, you know, as I highlighted in a piece I wrote, oh, as I highlighted in a recent piece for foreign policy, and I promise you guys, foreign policy is becoming a, a staple of our show. I'm mm -hmm. going to be reading after this article, mm -hmm. I'm exclusively, you know, dedicating my life to reading foreign policy. Sweden was targeted by a disinformation campaign alleging that Swedish social services kidnap Muslim children. What? Like Sweden Gate, it did considerable damage to the country's refugees. You think kidnapping Muslim children is the same as, you know, they have a culture that they may not feed their guests? Yeah. What is wrong with you? And like Sweden Gate, it presented no evidence to back up the allegation. Even if, quote, even if Sweden Gate is not instigated or co coordinated by a hostile country. Sweden's image could take a hit. Oh. Leaf noted. Leaf was the misinformation expert. But now hold on. There she had a point. Now, if you're going to make that kind of claim, sure. <laughs> Some research <laughs> should go with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. What, what? Like their image going to take a hit? No, 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 no. That, uh, that you know, the, the child, the child thing. Oh, the, the Muslim child. child. Yes, yeah. yes. That's that's very different. <laughs> exactly. Very different. That's the point. It's again. It's <laughs> exactly. That's the point you're trying to make. I know. But, but but and then it's just it's got two more paragraphs. It's bullshit. But I like to read this. But even if it was more likely to be the result of random nonsense than targeted vitriol, even if you had the you had the. Ecological Defense Ministry, look into this. What do you want more from the Swedish government? I don't get it. Sweden Gate should prompt some self-examination among those who shared the content. Okay. Uh, one of the first viral spreaders of the original post turned out to be a repeat sharer of propaganda and general junk. Although Beijing or Moscow likely does not pay for the poster, he or she is certainly not a reliable source of information. I've got news for you, lady. Internet is not a reliable source and of information. Man, you fucking this idiot. whole article, she never went back to the New York Times. Like, if she would have at least lectured us on the New York Times for a paragraph, I would have taken her much more seriously. Did she lecture us at yeah, all? Yeah, like on... as, as a 
Okay, yeah, as a publisher of proper articles, you should look into them before. Yeah, yeah, that's much. But she's going after the real criminals. I know, but that, that's the, media exactly. That's the thing that, you know, it shows that, you know, how bad faith is this. Because at the very least, the New York Times should have received as much attention that she's giving to all these other posts and people, right? I mean, we read the New York Times article. We saw the New York Times article. Then she goes on. He or she is certainly not a reliable source of information, in parentheses, in the allegations of Swedish social services kidnapping, the original spreader was found by psychological defense agency to be linked to Islamic State. So uh, should we believe the agency or should we not? <laughs> she, uh, oh my God, I don't get it. As for the map that documents Northern Europe's lack of hospitality, the poster sheepishly admitted, quote, I do admit the research that was done wasn't extremely professional and that the meaning of the color may have been exaggerated to the point it almost looked like as if Northerners never give food, which is, of course, not always true. So basically, the guy went, it was an online joke, <laughs> you know, I can... although this, the people posting various complaints about Sweden clearly have the right to do so. Sweden Gate is a sorry tale of the damage that unverified allegation can cause. Which country, organization, or person will be targeted next? It could be any country, any organization, any person. Man, I just think wish. And verif- think and verify. Odd tales are not just innocuous fun. Can I just, I just hope came- that these are the kind of problems that we face from now on going forward. So Iranians made fun for drinking tea 24 seven, you know, not drinking water, only tea, or I don't know, some other exaggeration, something like that. Huh? Iran depends on which city, if you're from Esfahan, but you're stingy, so if you're Azeri yeah. or not intelligent, if you're from North, you're a cuckold, <laughs> just, it depends on what you are. But then I would uh, say, come here, come here. First they, first they made fun of Sweden and I said nothing. <laughs> then made fun of Scandinavia, they, I said nothing. Then they made a whole Northern Europe and I said nothing. And now I think they're going to post and make fun of the whole world. And I don't know if it's too late now or not. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, so stand up, guys. Stand up. And I apologize for the spread of misinformation last time. (laughs) I apologize sincerely. Again, I don't know what is with us and misinformation. It's just everything we cover turns out to be misinformation. Yeah, but it's just really yeah. funny but i mean to me it's really funny because she could have had an article about how the new york times really spreads misinformation because they're the ones that put it into like an overall context and made it seem like is widespread yeah, that person, there are, yeah. Right? i can't if wait I to find that the person, new york times i can't find i can't wait till i find a new york times article for the next week because <laughs> that whole bit about the child sitting <laughs> and every the smell of the meatballs are coming and the child brings his hand and the mother goes, no, you are not allowed food. You're not, you not a family member. Go, go. I don't know what New York Times thinks is happening yeah. in Sweden, but I, I am feeling it's not that bad. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Man. So, you know, as always, I thought I end with the most important story. Yeah. And again, I still don't know if that was misinformation or not. She did not provide research <laughs> to debunk the family. Whether, I still don't know if I go to Sweden, I'm going to get fed or not. I'm kind of in a limbo. <laughs> <It did. laughs> Fine, fair enough. The New York Times will agree that it seems to have partaken in spreading misinformation. I, and it was quite a, again, New York Times thing. You're right. She should have focused on that because it was so racist as well. <laughs> it's like saying, yeah, I imagine in Iran, I was sitting, drink, eating kebab while we drinking tea, and you know, there is a smell of saffron. It's just so racist to assume <laughs> that everybody in Sweden, twenty four seven, is yeah, eating we're... meatballs with lingerberry sauce. <laughs> it's just like what the fuck? <laughs> oh man, that was that was insane. That was insanely ridiculous. I loved it, right? This was good pick. I that was insane. But okay, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your comments, questions, criticisms down below. Make sure to get to them. If not, please like and subscribe. I'll see you in our next video. Thank you.